Hey, it's Hugh Hewitt, and when I want to know what's going on with the Cavs, the Browns, and the Tribe, I tune into Sports Fix. Sports Fix listeners, like us on Facebook today. Facebook.com slash the Sports Fix. Business owners and professionals, do you want to take your business, your product, your team, your event to the next level? You want to advertise right here with the Sports Fix. Our listeners are among the most loyal listeners, terrestrial or internet. The Sports Fix universe is not only the radio show, but tens of thousands of fans on Facebook and Twitter. Email me, Jerry Myers, the Sports Fix at AOL.com. That's the Sports Fix at AOL.com. And let me help you swing for the fences and hit it out of the park right here on the Sports Fix. Portions of the Sports Fix brought to you by Harry Buffalo. Catch every UFC pay-per-view live in full HD at Harry Buffalo North Olmstead, just outside Great Northern Mall. Harry Buffalo, join the herd. Live in Ohio, it's time to get your fix. The Sports Fix. Bam, there we go. Off and running. Well, what's left of my voice <laughs> this weekend is off and running with you guys as we have launched it. Here it is, Monday, another edition of the Sports Fix, another week of the Sports Fix. The madness of March is truly now about to begin. Conference tournaments wrapped up over the weekend. The big bracket is all set. We know where the Buckeyes are going. Hey, we know where the Vikings are going. Not in the big bracket, but they're in a a bracket here. We'll talk about that in the show. We've got a ton of basketball to talk about. Cavs, hoops, near scare with LeBron James, uh, even in a... Another big victory here for the Cavs. Well, (laughs) big victory, not big game for the Cavaliers. Got lots of hoop stuff to get into. Tribe, Al Rosen passes away over the weekend. Spring training notes. Dan Wismar from the Cleveland Fan. He's going to be with us here early in the show. Spend most of the first hour here with us. So a little bit, a little bit of a different format. And then I'm going to crank open the phone lines to start hour two here. And we'll roll into it. 90 minute edition of the Sports Fix coming your way here today. We'll talk some Browns free agency, some NFL stuff alone. The Browns right now, I believe, have uh, Dwayne Bow locked in a closet somewhere in Berea. Uh, until he agrees to sign that contract, they're just not going to let him leave. They they handcuffed him, uh, I think, to a radiator. Last report I heard, just kidding. But uh, the uh, the Browns trying to trying desperately to turn the a little bit of the the stemming tide here in free agency. Hey, that could be a decent get. I'm nothing earth shattering, but it could actually fill kind of that Jordan Cameron tight end wide receiver role thing a little bit. We'll talk about that, guys. All of that stuff. Monsters over the weekend. Cavs heat tonight. Tons of things to get into, man. Let's uh, get rolling. I had a hell of a weekend, too, man. I'll talk to you guys. Got to meet some of you guys for the first time here, man. Uh, Great stuff. Let's do it. Let's roll into the show. I'll talk about that. We'll get things rocking and rolling. Welcome in, you guys, to the Sports Fix. I'm your host, the big daddy on the microphone, J-Rock. Jerry Myers here with you each and every weekday at noon live across the Sports Fix radio network. You guys know it. If you're here and if you don't, welcome in, my friends. Maybe you're listening on TuneIn, one of the easiest and most accessible places to listen to the show. Crystal clear audio, every single device live on TuneIn, their website, on their digital and mobile apps. Or maybe you're listening on Spreaker and Mixler and their awesome digital and mobile apps as well, their direct websites, our direct website, TheSportsFix.net, so many places to hit that bad boy live at noon each and every day, noon Eastern. Many of you in other time zones, other areas, other countries, other parts of the world. You guys enjoy it 24-7, thousands of you on digital delay, listening on iHeartRadio, the world's largest internet radio service on iHeart Radio, or excuse me, iTunes, the place to download it and subscribe it on SoundCloud and Spreaker and Stitcher Radio and CarPlay, all of the different places and podcast formats that you guys enjoy the show. Thank you so much for being with us. So many of them that I'm stumbling over myself doing it. Thank you guys. No matter live, delay, how it is, you're all a part of this thing without you. This is nothing but a guy talking into a microphone and the voice bouncing back to me. And with you guys, it's the Sports Fix. So be a part of the show of course as i said phones not open hour one i'm gonna crack them in hour two 216 
216-539-7535 is the number to call when we do just that. 216-539-7535. Facebook and Twitter is the place to be 24-7. You can get through all the time, anytime. Facebook.com slash the sports fix. Tweet with us at the sports fix C L E email us the sports fix at AOL.com Facebook.com slash the sports fix tweet with us daddy at the sports fix C L E and email us 24 seven the sports fix at AOL.com. I mean so much to get into before I do anything. I want to thank some of you guys. I'll tell you, man, uh, you know, a couple of things in this first part. I had a, a wrestling gig over the weekend, a really big one, something that I was talking to you guys about. I'm not going to go too long on it, uh, but I, I'll tell you what. I was so I was I was very pleasantly surprised this weekend at uh, how many of you guys came out. I, I had over a dozen people through uh, listening to or, or being through the sports fix here uh, that I didn't even know end up deciding to come up, whether it was from hearing me talk about it on the show or hearing some of the, the various uh, promos and interviews that I've put up on the on the various social media, our Facebook page, some of those little things. Um, it was it was unreal. Uh, some people let me know on Facebook then. I'm sitting over at the merchandise table. I've got guys coming up to me going, hey, Hey, I'm so and so. I'm the, I mean, it was so cool. Uh, it was really uh, a really awesome environment, awesome weekend, awesome, awesome all the way around. By the Charles Morgan, got a chance to meet him for the first time, and his wife uh, Ron Graham came up and brought a carload of people. Uh, Jeff and Clay, a bunch of you guys. Thank you so much. It was really, really cool stuff, man. And uh, as was the event. Like I said, I'm not going to go too much. I know some of you guys, and it's cool because some, so it's there's you know twenty thousand of you guys on the social media. I interact back and forth some people get into the wrestling thing some people are like oh man j-rock i love you but how you doing that i get it it is what it is and uh, i can't change your minds on that but man i had uh a lot of people uh uh especially like i said coming up this weekend go man wow uh that was even better than i thought and i said let me tell you something it was even better than i thought too because um this is where i'm gonna end it never give up on yourself that's all i'm gonna say man is uh um I did some stuff this weekend. I'll just put it in perspective like this. The uh, <laughs> the match that I had this weekend, my my youngest son is eight years old. He's never seen me do that before. He he looks at me in a completely different way today because he goes, oh, wow, man. That was like, it, it blew his mind. Um, and it was cool that I could uh, be able to spend the last year trying to get back to doing something that I uh, used to do and do it at a very high level. Uh, that was scary that I couldn't do it, and I, th- I thought I pulled it off pretty well. Still got a lot of work to do, but I'm just saying, look, you can get a second chance at anything. There is no third chance. Time eventually does run out on you, but, man, don't uh, don't quit on yourself, man. Don't have regrets in life. If you want something, go after it, work for it, man, and, and the thing is – Just start doing it today because every time you wait until tomorrow, tomorrow never comes. If you start today, you've already started and then there's no turning back. And uh, I just I'll tell you what great stuff. It was really cool perspective coming back. You know, I've been doing that for 15 years and uh, to circle back around and then get back there and then go, man. All right. So here we go again. We'll have some fun with it. We'll see where it goes. And uh, I just want to thank some of you guys thought it was really cool. I was really surprised the amount of people that made the 90 minute drive up to Erie, Pennsylvania to come and check it out or meet me or be a part of that through the show. Thank you guys so much. And I'll leave it at that. Not going to go on with the whole, uh, with the whole wrestling thing, but thank you guys. It was very special thing. And now, now I'm off and running with this thing. So let's see where it could go, man. Let's see uh, how many of your TV sets I can turn up on here before I'm done going through round two of this thing uh let's speaking of rounds the brackets are up the tournament's up all of that march madness going on dan wismar just about five minutes from now is going to join us here on the sports fix so wherever we leave off we'll take a break we'll get dan on we'll join and pick it up but the ohio state buckeyes will start there they end up losing to michigan state the other night in the tournament in a game that was to me just looked a lot like i hate to say this what's going to probably happen to the buckeyes very uh Early on in this tournament, they really just were out of it from one end to the other with Michigan State. And uh, it was just it was a matter of just losing to a team that was better than you there. And I think that the Buckeyes seeding in the tournament pretty much shows right about where they're at. Um, While some people look at it fortunate because they were they were looking at perhaps getting the eight, nine seed somewhere in there, which would have put them directly in line with a second round number one seed matchup, I think that's even being presumptive because they end up with a 10th seed, which avoids that scenario because the 10 
ends up on the other side of a two for round two, but it doesn't matter because the Buckeyes are going to be very hard pressed to make it to round two. They've got VCU in the first round of the tournament. Like I said, we'll we'll get into it more here in a little bit when Dan joins us. But man, that's a that's going to be a tough get. VCU, I, I think I had it. Matter of fact, let me pull that so I make sure I give the uh, right number here. But I believe that their um, their strength of schedule here very high. Um, it, yeah, absolutely. That's 14th toughest schedule in the country here. Uh, CBS Sports had rated it when they looked at it. So, I mean, that's uh, that's something right there to keep in mind. That's a team that fought its way through, you know, won their conference tournament the other day, knocked off Dayton, which is, of course, the team that knocked off Ohio State last year. Uh, VCU 5-3 and three this year against teams in the top 50 of the RPI. So they've got some they've got some. Uh, testing some seasoning there against some of the better teams. Uh, I'll tell you what, Ohio State, we'll get into it here with with Dan in just a minute, but Ohio State definitely has their work cut out for them just to get out of the first round of this one. Of course, Kentucky going to be looking to see if they can do something nobody's done since Indiana back in 76. Can they run the table on this? I saw the odds come out this morning. And um, I believe uh, the field, it, it's just a slight favorite over Kentucky in this. Uh, I know Dan mentioned last week that he didn't think they were going to do it. I, I'll tell you, um, it gives you a heck of a storyline there to see can they get it done. And, of course, they'll they'll cross through Cleveland here on the way if things go the way people expect it to. Um, what four teams – well, we'll get into that with Dan here in just a minute. I might as well start getting up to the break. But what four teams are we going to see here in Cleveland? Let's talk about some of that. We've got a lot of hoops to get into, not just March Madness. The the Vikings, I'll talk about that later. They know where they're going in the postseason tournament dancing. But Cavaliers, uh, good and bad. <laughs> Scary moment to come out of a another good victory for the Cavs. Of course, Cavaliers play the Orlando Magic. They've got the heat tonight, by the way. Uh, we'll preview that near the end of the show. But Cavaliers, Magic, Cavs roll the Magic 123-108 to yesterday. Kyrie Irving had a great game. J.R. Smith had a good offensive game. LeBron, all-around great game. 13 dimes, really uh, ran the offense well, kind of still rolling and riding the hot hand of Kyrie. <laughs> He's got 90 points in those two games combined. Doesn't hurt to have the 57, but drop another 33 with it on top of that. But scary moment for the Cavs, for LeBron James, as uh, LeBron bangs up his knee, and uh, and it could have been a lot worse than it is. Don't know if he's going to play. Probably wouldn't be surprised at all if he doesn't play tonight against the Heat for precautionary pur- person- purposes. You, you can't have anything crazy happening now. But, man, that's another. You just you pause and hold your breath. Just as things are coming together down the stretch, that's the thing that you, you go, man, that's what can derail the Cavs. Kyrie. LeBron, these guys got to gotta stay healthy because that's where, you know, look at all the teams. Look at Oklahoma City, what they've been dealing with, with Chicago. I mean, you can point to any number of teams that have lost their star players, and it's taken great teams and potentially great seasons right down the toilet. I mean, Oklahoma City is just an absolute great example here. They're scrambling, waiting, hoping that they can uh, – survive down the stretch, get their guy back and get themselves going. So, you know, big, big pause of the breath there here in Cleveland uh, when it comes to LeBron and Kyrie there. And Kevin Love sat out yesterday for rest purposes. Cavs didn't need him, as I said, able to take care of their business. But big sigh of relief that nothing serious, it appears, uh, happens there with LeBron on that. And I would be surprised if he plays tonight. Uh, I just I don't see any reason for it. I know it's the heat and all that, but there's no edge to that. Their season's different. Cavs season is different now. Um, Hyper extend. I, I mean, I, I guess it depends on how he feels today, but I would most definitely err on the side of caution if I were the Cavs. And if they call me and ask me, I'll make sure I let them know. But I don't anticipate that being anything that they're going to do. So we'll see what they do. We'll talk some more. We may know by the time the show's over. We may know uh, word from the Cavs that he's playing or not playing because practice is going on here, starting up as we speak. So we'll check on that. We'll talk a little more about that Cavs game. As I said, Kyrie Irving continues his hot run. LeBron, there was an interesting piece uh, in the Plain Dealer about the the this uh, the Cavaliers dynamic with LeBron and Kyrie and is are the Cavaliers a better team when LeBron is primarily passing and Kyrie is driving to the hoop and doing the scoring and and getting in his role and you know there is something to be said see and that's that's the point that I made 
kind of in a different way of putting it since the beginning of the season is that you know what LeBron is. Whether you think he's first, second, third, fourth, whatever in the NBA, you know he's up there right at the top. He's in the area of guys up there. So uh, it's semantics to argue that. Point is, is that he can do his thing no matter what. And I said all year, man, when the Cavaliers get to where, number one, to where they can win without LeBron, that's when you've really got something going. But when you get to that point where Kyrie can be, you know, as we've talked about, when each one's on the floor, they make sure to keep one on the floor at the same time. But even when both are on the floor, when you get to the point that you don't know if LeBron James, LeBron James, where, like I said, whether you think he's top five, top one, top ten, whatever, when you get to the point that the other team is not sure if he's going to be the decoy or the guy, how do you beat a team like that? That's what I'm. That's what becomes, you know, the X factor because then you've you've literally got to have a, a probably a trifecta of super high quality defenders to be able to cover your bases on that because the minute that you don't know if LeBron James is just going to facilitate all day long or if he's going to try to go because that's it when he starts going you know one on five we've talked about that that's when he, you know the Cavs play right into that there's there's a difference between one on five then you graduate to team ball then you go to the next level where as I said all of a sudden LeBron James is just happy to sit there and dish and dime all day long and that that becomes the unstoppable dynamic offensively for the Cavs that ball movement moves so much better and uh, it just becomes such a pretty team to watch but it's a great point because because of that right there because now what do you do what do you do because now and then even if you if you, if you somehow have the two lockdown defenders and you're able to to lock up both guys there uh that's where the depth of the rest of the team then comes in man it's a tough recipe a tough out for whoever has to do that in the seven-game series. Of course, the key is to keep that recipe healthy until you get there, which is what was scary even then about yesterday. We'll talk about all of that. Got a little Harlem Globetrotters in the background because we're talking basketball, all kinds of basketball. We're going to talk some baseball. Again, as I said, Al Rosen passes away over the weekend. Legendary baseball and Cleveland Indians figure. We'll talk about that. Let's get Dan Wismar in on the conversation. We'll see if they let Dwayne Bow out of the closet yet in Berea or not. I don't know man i'm telling you they i heard they were waterboarding him the other day man just they hey, you're gonna sign this contract are you gonna sign this contract this is cleveland baby okay i'll sign it i'm just saying man they haven't let him go for three days they said you know what we're done playing around man the next one of you guys that comes to cleveland try to leave without signing the con try to leave without signing this contract anyways i'm just kidding Nobody called the uh, NSA. They're, nobody's waterboarding anybody in Berea, at least except the fan base. Anyways, all right, guys, we're going to take a break. Let's get Dan Wismar in on the conversation and pick things up right there. We'll talk some Cavs hoops, some March Madness, Buckeyes, VCU coming up, Kentucky. What can they do? We'll get into the top seeds. We'll look at who may be coming to Cleveland for the middle part, the key part of the tournament. You've got the... Four team. Which four is it going to be? Kentucky is renting out all the hotel rooms in Cleveland as we speak, making plans for a, a big blue party. We'll talk about all of that. Tribe, Browns, Cavs, Buckeyes, Hoops, and more. Dan Wismar from the Cleveland Fan joins us next here on the Sports Fix. <laughs> This is the Sports Fix. Are you talking to me? Yes. Are you talking to me? Yes. Are you talking to me? Yes. Hey, call me Mr. Pig! Ah! We'll call you whatever you like, as long as we can call you a fan of the Sports Fix. Guys, want to take just a second as we head into this break and remind you about the official business printing source of the Sports Fix, our friends at Signs and Ship. Signs and Ship, I'm telling you, Chris and Pam, they've taken care of me since day one, and they can do the same for you. Whether you're a small business that's already been established and you're looking to grow to that next level and expand your business, or perhaps you've got an idea that you just know is going to be a great business and you need to figure out how to brand it and how to promote it and put it out there, Signs and Ship is the place for you. If you need a logo, they can create one for you. They have a fantastic graphic designer. Business cards, signs, banners, yard signs, mobile advertising, anything you can think of that you need to promote your business, they've got it at Signs and Ship. The best thing about them, too, is each of their locations, whether it's 
the home base here in Elyria, Ohio, that I work with, or their spots in Virginia, Florida, and Pennsylvania. It's all local sourced. Very important to me because we all understand that small business is the lifeblood of the community. So check them out, signsandship.com, or call Chris and Pam today, 440-323-6060, the home office in Elyria, Ohio. Signs and Ship, quality printing at affordable prices. Sports Fix listeners, like us on Facebook today. Facebook.com slash the Sports Fix. How to be a great dad in 15 seconds. Bike ride, go fish, walk in the park, phone call, milkshake, play catch, picnic, fly a kite, tell jokes, laugh, talk, read a story, tell a story, bumper car, swing set, bowling, pillow fight, cut loose, stay tight. Because the smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Call 877-4DAD-411 or visit fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. Fantasy sports lovers, you put so much time, hard work, and effort into playing week to week that it quickly stops being a fantasy and, and starts start getting, getting real. real. And when the smoke clears, you want to show off those victories with a real prize. I mean, a really real prize. Nobody, Nobody does, does that, that like, like Fantasy, fantasy Jocks. Jocks. The crew over at Fantasy Jocks have beautiful, high-quality, and heavy-duty championship belts, rings, trophies, and so much more for all your fantasy sports needs. There's literally only one place to go. FantasyJocks.com We're going to bring it on in. It's time now. It's all city. We got to do it for them, dog. We got to do it for Cleveland. They're waiting on us. Every single night, every single practice, every single game, we got to give it all we got because they're going to ride with us. Everything that we do on this floor because of this city, we owe them. We're going to grind for this city. They're going to support us, man, but we got to give it all back to them. We get it done. The toughness that we have on the court is going to come from this city. Everybody, the whole city of Cleveland, that's what it's all about. It's time to bring them something special. Let's go. Bring it on in, everybody. Let's go. Hard work on three. Together on six. One, two, three. Hard work. Four, five, six. Yeah. One, two, three. Hard work. Four, five, six. Yeah. 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 It's all us. Cleveland on three. One, two, three. three. Hey, everybody. This is Jerry the King Lawler from WWE, and you're listening to The Sports Fix. Welcome back to the Sports Fix Live. J-Rock back with you. All kinds of cats running down dreams here as we get rolling. That, that, that could fit a lot of different things. Cavaliers, every team in college basketball here. Well, at least 68 of them. The other ones are, hey, they're running down dreams too. They just weren't necessarily the first dream that you have. But hey, you know what? You got you to gotta take the cards as they're dealt. But a lot of people, uh, it's, it's that fun, fun, fun time of the year here. And there's all kinds of other things going on in the sports world and uh, it's a great time. Dan Wismar getting ready to join us here earlier than usual here for the rest of the first hour. We're going to talk hoops, we'll talk Cavs, we'll talk Buckeyes, the big tournament coming up. I want to see who he thinks is uh, coming here to Cleveland when that part of the tournament reaches Cleveland. We'll talk all those things and more with Dan Wismar. You guys can talk with us on Facebook and Twitter as always. Facebook.com slash the sports fix or tweet with us at the sports fix CLE and you can always email us the sports fix at AOL.com Facebook.com slash the sports fix tweet with us at the sports fix CLE Dan Wismar how you doing my man I'm doing great J-Rock good to be with you uh, big big weekend for you I understand uh, up in Erie and uh, we had some <laughs> uh, some good Cavs action and uh, of course big selection Sunday yesterday so we're heading into that time of year we all love. Uh, yeah. Oh, baseball, yeah. Baseball's, baseball's coming and uh, lots of basketball for the next three weeks. You got that right, man. Tons of things, man. And by the way, somebody asked me just a second ago during the break, uh, there's a picture of me <laughs> in a gorilla suit here from over the weekend. Uh, without going into the long detail, uh, let's just say I wasn't happy about the way something went, so I attempted to uh, pull some tomfoolery in a full gorilla outfit, and much like the Phoenix gorilla. And all I'm going to say is that thing was so 
stifling. I mean, I almost died in that thing trying to do athletic activity for for a long period of time inside this thing. I don't know how the Phoenix Gorilla does it. I don't know how those mascots do it. I don't know how any of them do it in those big full suits because after about eight or ten minutes in this thing, I, I'm telling you, I probably sweated out ten pounds of bodily fluids in this thing. It was unbelievably hot, and I'm like, man, people do this every night. So yeah, I got to, I played a little mascot, but uh, anyways, a little monkey business going on over the weekend, if you will. But uh, man, I don't know how they do it. I don't know how they live in those things yeah that stuff i'm gonna have to look up that picture though um that, that, that <laughs> might be uh, <laughs> might be might be worth uh, worth archiving i'll hold it against you someday or something i don't know it's funny yeah there, it's anyways but uh had a fun weekend here and uh, so did a lot of people all the conference tournaments wrapped up cavaliers even though they almost lost lebron james Still had a fun weekend, basketball-wise here. Uh, you know what? Where do you want to go first, man? You you set the table here. Let's talk some hoops. So you, where do you want to go first? You want to let's talk well, some let's go, uh, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Midwest Regional. Uh, All right. Let's do four, that. Uh, let's go college uh, hoops I first, say man. Sweet Sixteen. I, it really couldn't be playing out much better for Cleveland, Ohio, could it? I mean that. Oh, the, I know. You look at the brackets, and to me, there. You know, the South maybe looks like a little bit of a weak link. You know, you've got Iowa State and. Uh, and Gonzaga, and there's some some guys that aren't maybe traditional powerhouses. Uh, George sounds in there as a four seed. Duke is the one. That to me, that looks like the most unattractive region. Uh, if you look at uh, the Midwest, so geez, it, can you imagine though if if even just the top four seeds make it through to the Sweet Sixteen, and you could have matchups with Kentucky, Maryland, and then Notre Dame, Kansas, with a potential uh, you know regional final of Kentucky, Kansas, or Kentucky, Notre Dame. Uh, I don't think I don't think they could ask for a much better, uh, you know. Obviously, you know, upsets are possible, but if uh, if the marquee teams make it through, boy, this town will be on its uh, on its ear uh, for a uh, Kentucky Notre Dame uh, regional final or Kentucky Kansas. Uh, that should just be spectacular. I mean, I'm with you, man. I mean, I was talking about it. I saw the the uh, a lot of the news reporting over the last few days that Kentucky, you know, fans in advance of things in anticipation, just locking up the hotels and all the reservations in the area, getting ready to come and uh, and flood the town. But I mean, I haven't done I haven't done the bracket yet. I haven't even sat down and started to do my thing yet. I figure I'll get into that here in the next day or so. But uh, looking at that part, I have gone ahead and looked ahead. Who do you do you see it holding true to see? Do you do you see those top seeds coming out of there? I mean, who do you think are the four? I mean, looking at things, I mean, you know, you've got West Virginia in there that can throw a monkey wrench. Obviously, always, you know, I mean, Kentucky, you you know, you said yourself, you didn't think that they make it all the way through this thing, but do you, you think they make it through Cleveland? Uh, you know, I think that um, I think that Notre Dame is maybe the best shot at beating them. They're just so fundamentally sound. Uh, got a chance to watch them a couple times over the last week or so. Uh, really like their chances. I think if anybody in that Midwest regional, at least, has a chance to knock off uh, Kentucky, I think Notre Dame might be the team. Um, Wichita State maybe is a little bit of a, of a dark horse in there. Uh, Notre Dame would have to beat them to get to that, uh, uh, to that Sweet 16 game. But... Um, you know, Kansas always has a nice team too. They they've been a little inconsistent this year, but they still snagged the two seed, and and then they're a formidable team. So mm-hmm. I just think that that uh, regional is loaded. Um, but I do think that you know Maryland, I guess, would be of the top four seeds, maybe the maybe the least likely to come out of there. I don't know if you saw Buffalo. Uh, I was just about to uh, ask you about Buffalo. I was going to say maybe that's your twelve got, you know, seed to keep an eye on, man. I had I had not seen much of them this year, but man, they have two players at Ford, and then they uh, the Mac Player of the Year, whose name is escaping me at the minute. Um, you know, a couple of bigs that you just don't typically see in the Mac, some athleticism that you just don't normally see in the Mac. Um, and uh, yeah, they're they're formidable. They that that first round game with uh, with West Virginia looks like a doozy, yeah, and, and then they would have to play the the Maryland Valpo winner. So. Um, yeah, they could they could be a surprise team. They could come out of there, but uh, I, I would I would uh, relish certainly a, uh, a Kentucky Notre Dame uh, you know regional final there at the Q. That would be awesome. 
Yeah, Buffalo's got Ford, Moss, Shannon Evans. They've got a couple of guys. I was going to ask you. I said, man, there's always that you know 12 seed that, that traditionally does something. I said, man, you never know. And they're kind of regional, you know what I mean? Like because of Buffalo and Cleveland there, you know, maybe they get the sentimentality going. Who knows? But uh, I got to tell you, I, 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 I think Kansas – I think Kansas comes out of the whole thing. Um, uh, it just They've got – look at the strength of schedule, and you look at how they stand out compared to almost everybody else in the tournament. What did they finish, second or something like that? It was very high. I know that. And uh, they played a very, very, very hard schedule this season. And uh, I don't know, man. I Something in my gut tells me that they're the team that ends it for, for Kentucky here in Cleveland. But I don't know. That that could well be, and and they obviously have to beat Notre Dame to do that. Notre Dame kind of peaking right now, but well, uh, yeah, absolutely. Won, Notre Dame's going on that the run, ACC, man. Yeah, first, yeah. First, first time ever. Uh, for, now, obviously, they've been independent, so for them to win their first conference championship in history is, isn't that great a deal. But uh, they uh, they're playing their best ball at the right time, of course, and and uh, they uh, they had a big big win uh, on, on Sunday, but I guess it was Saturday that they had that game, but. Uh, yeah, I, I like them. And Maryland, I think, might be the weakest weakest link there. Uh, but uh, it would be great to see Maryland have to, you know, represent here a little bit. They ended up finishing second in the Big Ten, and yeah. and you got to be pulling for them just for Big Ten pride. But uh, I, I don't think that they can beat the Wildcats. I think uh, if, if Kentucky loses, it'll have to be in the in the regional final to either your Notre Dame or your Kansas. Um, and uh, Geez, you got to lay odds now to, to pick Kentucky uh, to win it all. Uh, I think I just I just heard from a buddy of mine that it got about 175 bucks to win 100. Uh, yeah. <laughs> now, uh, to, if if you're if you're rooting for Kentucky, they're they're that much of a prohibitive favorite that you're you're laying odds to vote for them to to bet on them. Yeah, I heard the same thing. Absolutely, man. I think the field is just a slight favorite over Kentucky overall. It's, you know, it's like 50-50 Kentucky or all the other teams put together in a group. Uh, that's when you know that uh, the odds are leaning in your favor. That's what's going to make this one very interesting because, you know, with several of the other teams that have come into this same scenario trying to finish out the undefeated run, it wasn't it was more questionable whether they could. I think this is one, I think, or maybe people have just talked themselves into it, but where people believe, much like you said, and much like the odd show, that there is a real chance here for them to do this. Yeah, and it's going to have to be, I think, and I said last week, you know, a, kind of a veteran team. Certainly, I think it's going to have to be a good three-point shooting team because try and score in the paint against these guys. Uh, it's just tough to put the ball in the basket from, from inside. Uh, you're going to have to be a, a team that uh, is hot on that particular night, shooting threes on that particular night, and uh, and putting up the points some other way than uh, in the paint. Because uh, Collie Stein and, and these guys, they're, they're just uh, they swat away shots like uh, like we swat flies. So it, it's just tough to score down low on them. Yeah, absolutely. I, I agree with you. I mean, that is just one one great basketball team over there. Whoever knocks them off, it's going to be a story for sure because that is a that's a hell of a team. Hey, I wanted to ask you just just something I noticed as a by play of this. We're talking about the teams at the top here with Kentucky um, back at the bottom, and I don't even know. I saw a headline came up on my phone while I was getting ready for the show, but I didn't read it about uh, you know suggestions that they tweak that first four structure. But regardless, and maybe you could tell me if you know what what the talk is about that. But one of the things that I'm I was thinking, and I thought, okay, maybe that plays into something I was going to mention is when you added the extra teams and the competition for the these few spots just to be in the first round. I think we see a byproduct of that over the last few seasons, especially like this year, you know, some people were talking about Murray state and Colorado state, not making the tournament winning 27 games, second highest win total of teams that didn't make the tournament only, only behind 28 by coastal Carolina a few years ago. But I was looking at the list of all the teams that have won 27 or 28 games and did not make the tournament since 1985. They're all 2011 and later 
and most of them in 2014 and 2015, which shows me that these smaller schools have realized the secret. They've got to win as many games. They've got to get as close to 30 wins as possible to keep themselves. But my point is that it raises the competition at the bottom and, and all of these other schools now, you know, doing the things like, you know, to raise their strength of schedule, to win more games, play more games, et cetera. But I thought it was interesting that all of these teams that have won 27 or 28 games and missed the tournament, it's all been in the last few years. Yeah, that's interesting to look at. And I guess maybe one obvious thing that jumps out at you is that teams are playing more games. Total. Right. Oh, well, uh, yeah, yeah. Playing a more, a more, you know, holiday tournaments and preseason tournaments and, and conference tournaments and all that, that that we didn't used to have. We talk about, uh, you know, how Indiana won it all with 32 wins, uh, you know, 40 years ago. And uh, now you just can't do, you got to win 40 games now to go all the way through. Yep. So just in general, there's more games being played. And, and I don't know how, uh, you know, there, there, there's obviously some kind of financial payout for getting into the tournament, but uh, I don't know why the competition would be that great in order to come into the tournament and, and get a spot. And so you can get your brains beat in by Kentucky or, or, or Villanova <laughs> or Duke or somebody in, in the first round since the 16 has ever beaten a one in the, in the history of the tournament, but um, I think it's obviously coming. there is some pay and and it's a it's a obviously an honor and it's a, a road trip for the kids, even if it's just a bus ride. Recruiting and, too, uh, Dan. I mean that makes a difference oh, sure. in recruiting. Oh yeah, it's say, a, it's yeah, a big yeah, deal. Yeah. Uh, March Madness is a, a, a big enough deal now that uh, just making it is uh, a feather in your cap, and certainly is a feather in a coach's cap, et cetera. So yeah, you can see where you. there's a, a fight to do it. But I I, I, I must plead ignorance, so Derry on the. Uh, "Quote unquote controversy," if it is one, or, or it's the discussion not. It's not a being controversy. About, about no, tweaking, no. Uh, tweaking that uh, that play in uh, format. I don't really know what's being talked about there. I'm sorry to say. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I don't know. I just thought you may have. I saw the little blurb, and I knew that that meant somebody was talking about it. But, yeah, it, like last year, there was three 27-win teams that didn't go. This year, two more. And I, I'm with you. They all play more, obviously, more games. As you said, what, 30, what was it, 34 was it for Indiana? How many was it? But uh, 30, uh, 32 is what 32, it was for them. 32, yeah, but, uh, 32. Yeah, 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 that's it. And uh, and you look there, these teams that we're talking about, just those teams that didn't make the tournament this year at 27, uh, both of those teams, Murray State, Colorado State, 27 and 5, 27 and 6. So that right there is 32 and 33 games, um, as many as they played to win the whole thing. And they won 27 and didn't make it. And obviously, strength of schedule, all of that. But uh, um, let me ask you something that you brought up in there, just for the hell of it while we're talking about it. The I... I'm one of these guys that firmly believes that the day is coming. I don't know when, I don't know who or any of that, but the day is coming. A 16 is going to beat a 1, just like eventually that 8th seed eventually beat a 1 seed in the NBA playoffs. Was that Denver, I believe, was the first one to do it? But eventually it happened, and it will happen in the tournament. Do you think it'll ever happen, or do you think the gap between 1 and 64, 5, 6, 7, 8, whatever, is that big? Well, no, I, I think it will happen. There have been, and I don't remember in recent years, a, a super close game or, or someone even coming close to doing it. But I do believe it can happen. I, uh, you know, I just think just when you're talking about the pressure on the one is is immense. Uh, you know, it, uh, yeah, I just think one of these days a, a team is going to choke it up, and we're going to have a, a Cleveland State Indiana type scenario, yes. which was a. Uh, uh, that was, was a 14 two, and a 3. Was that a 15 and a 2? I'm not it sure. It was either which. 14 uh, or 15. I can't remember, but, yeah, it was yeah, one of the I two. I think it was a 14 to 3. But, yeah, you, you'll have a team that just uh, comes in hot, uh, confident and, and cocky and nothing to lose. And, and uh, yeah, I, I think it's, uh, uh, you know, obviously speculation. But, yeah, sure, it could happen. And, uh, you know, I don't know if it'll happen. I don't see it happening this year, certainly. But, uh, you know, it's never going to be expected when it does come around. Here, actually, while we're, while you mentioned it, you don't have it in front of you. I pulled it up. Sixteen versus one. Obviously, uh, there's never been a, a sixteen seed to win. Uh, there have been a couple of of uh, fifteen seeds. There's been seven fifteens that have knocked off twos. Cleveland State was a, a fourteen, knocking off a three in that one. By the way, uh, right. But, uh, there's been and that's where there's eighteen of those. But when you get to the one, I'm looking at some of the closest ones here. As you said, you've got uh, a couple of very close shots here. There was uh, 
1989. One point of a number one 16 upset. Georgetown defeated Princeton 50-49. to Alonzo Mourning blocked the last two game-winning shots for Princeton at the buzzer to save the victory for Georgetown by one point. And Oklahoma, in that same tournament, was down 17 in the first half to East Tennessee State and then took back the lead with one minute left. They almost lost it at the end, but a half-court shot went off. They also won by one point. In 1990, Murray State took Michigan State to overtime but lost, so there was an overtime battle between 1-16. In 1996, Purdue beat Western Carolina by two. Western Carolina missed a three-pointer and a two-pointer in the final five seconds to tie or win that game. And last year, Coastal Carolina was tied with Virginia up until the final eight minutes of the second half but there's been an overtime and there's been a couple of one point escapes in the tournament uh since uh since the 16 and one seedings began that's as close as they've come so it's been right there but look at that it's been a long time since it's been closer than that like that uh western carolina game that's 96 so you're still looking at pretty much two two decades since any team's gotten that close to doing it yeah, interesting. I vaguely remember that Georgetown Princeton game. Uh, and now that you mention that, uh, Alonzo Morning blocking the two game winning shots, man. That's, and that's, yeah, those, now did, you that's say, did you say Morning or Patrick Ewing? No, it was Alonzo Morning. It was 1989. Oh, it was 1989. Oh, oh, let's go yeah. back in the 70s for that one. Okay. N- but yeah, yeah that's, that's uh, and that's what when you talk about March Madness creating those moments, that's it. Number one seed about to get knocked off. I'd love to go look up video of that now and listen to the call of that as it was happening. Two game winning shots blocked at the rim back to back by a true, you know, stud center, as we know what Alonzo Morning turned into and went to the NBA and all that. Um, but that's that that's those moments that March Madness creates. Like Christian Leitner, by the way. Everybody hates Christian Leitner. How about that? You know you done something when they make a whole 30 for 30 special about you brother yeah and i uh everybody was kind of tweeting about it last night i was not watching it they broadcast and i guess back to back two times and people watching it saying it was a great show and it was right on point and and everybody loved it but the people that i was reading were saying yeah i watched a great show and i still hate christian late now that it's over <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's that seemed to be the consensus um although uh getting his buy-in on on doing the show about him i guess was a nice touch and people were appreciative of him and 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 a lot of people were saying you know man that is maybe the greatest college basketball player i've seen that Uh, game or at least that moment haven't seen a haven't seen a better player since not necessarily a guy obviously that that went on to greatness in the nba but as far as him as a college player uh, it's it's hard to beat uh, four consecutive Final Fours, if I'm not mistaken, and um, you know the only guy to do that in in recent memory, and uh, that as a college player he was phenomenal, and of course has the most famous shot probably in the history of the tournament, and uh, so yeah, I've got to give him his due, and and I guess he was very uh, gracious and and accommodating, and and uh, having him sort of help narrate and 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 be interviewed in the present. Uh, for that show, uh, people said that that helped a lot, and he added a lot to the broadcast. So I'll, I'll have yet to see it. I I like to catch up on those thirty for thirties. They're all good, and but I uh, I missed it last night. Hey, that's what March Madness does, though. It creates those things that last. Like you said, that shot. I remember watching it live as it happened, and then watching it replayed every year since. You know, and and uh, I just uh, you remember that going. Get out of here. Tell me, did that really just happen? You know, but uh, I remember the oh, first. That was a, and that was a great team too. I mean, oh Grant yeah, Hill and, uh, oh. Thomas Hill and all those guys. It was a an unbelievable yes. team and great, great tradition. 20, 20 straight uh, NCAA tournaments for Shashevsky, I understand. And only only That's two other unreal. coaches, I guess, have done that. Bob Bob Knight, I think. And, That's unreal. Uh, the consistency. That is that is unreal, you know. Yeah. I understand, too, that this is the lowest seed ever for the Buckeyes uh, as a 10. I uh, read that last night. I was a little bit surprised to see that, but uh, obviously didn't have a memory of any lower seed because uh, there hasn't been one. But uh, – yeah, they're a ten, and even though uh, they're a ten, they are. I understand the early line has them favored by two and a half. Really? Uh, over over VCU, so a little bit of a surprise there. Uh, 
some people said that they were severely underseeded, and I'm wondering if those people watched a single Ohio State game this year. Well, even if you didn't watch them this year, I think I don't know how you could say that just watching it in the Big Ten tournament. I really thought that that was a perfect kind of isolation of them. They won a game, you know, and then they lost to a team that was, to me, clearly better than them, at least in that game from beginning to end. I know they had a much closer game earlier, but, uh, you know, I just said, I watched that game and I said, man, I don't know how these guys win a game in the tournament. I, I don't know that they don't just go one and done. If they do, I don't know how they get out of the first two. I just, just being well, honest. You're I, right. And I, my thinking was really about the same as that, Jerry. I just, you know, I said it three months ago. I said it before the season started. And I don't, I don't want to be it. I told you so here, but my concern all year was that there is no inside game and that there is no inside game on either end of the court. Yep. Uh, not only, you know, if, if the center, if Amir Williams was a, a defensive presence, uh, blocking shots and intimidating in the paint or something, you might be able to put up with how inept he is on the offensive end of the floor, how bad his hands are and how he doesn't finish and everything else. But he's not a defensive force. Uh, you know, a post-up center just completely backs him down. He just starts walking backwards when, when a guy posts him up. And I just, uh, you know, it's, it's sort of a common uh, uh, point for, for beat writers, guys that cover the team, and these are all guys that I follow on Twitter and I've met and know a little bit, uh, you don't criticize players by name. You know, they don't criticize current players. You're not going to see, you know, Doug Lamarie's or Marcus Hartman or these guys saying, you know, Amir Williams sucks, you know, or, or you know, <laughs> they, they, they just, they just don't say that. It doesn't stand you in good stead with the, uh, with the uh, sports information people at the university. And they've got to go back and interview that guy after the game. And, and so they just don't do it. It's a, just a, a no, no to criticize players by name, but, but what you start seeing is, is a, you know, over the weekend, during the game, here's Doug Lamer and he's tweeting, uh, you know, sometimes I think about what it was like when Jared Solinger was playing center for the Buckeyes. You know, he'll say things <laughs> like that, and, and you go, okay, well, that's about as close as you can come to criticizing right, the right. Williams for being a, a four-year stiff. Um, and uh, so, But you see that kind of thing going on, and, and uh you know, if, if anything, the next game the Buckeyes lose will will signal the end of the Amir Williams era, and and every Buckeye basketball fan will breathe a sigh of relief and say, okay, let's get on with it. And that next year we'll have some some new young bigs, uh, one transfer, one recruit, and and one guy who redshirted, uh, and and uh, hopefully their problems on the inside game will be uh, improved or, or or you know remedied. Um, they'll be young, but they'll be more talented than what we've been watching for the last few years. I just think that that, that is a gaping hole in the Ohio State game. There are, and if they were a great jump shooting team, unless they had John Diebler out there or somebody, you know, it might be different, but they don't. They're still an inconsistent jump shooting team, and, and D'Angelo Russell is about the only consistent guy, and he wasn't even consistent in that. He, he, he couldn't shoot in that Michigan State game. He, he missed his first five, I think, three-point attempts of and got off to a very, very slow start uh, in that game. And, and uh, Shannon Scott and, and uh, Sam Thompson weren't, uh, weren't helping him out. So when they aren't hitting that outside shot, they really have become a, uh, a jump-shooting team, and they're not that good at it. So I, I really think I, I don't see them winning a game. And, and if they do, I certainly don't see them winning two because they would have had Arizona in the second round. I mean, that's where I'm at with you. No, I, I'm i absolutely in agreement with you. With that Michigan State, I mean, they were just, no, I mean, you'd see, you know, three, four Michigan State jerseys hitting the boards, you know, one Buckeye, if you're lucky, in there. You know, I mean, they were just, I'm like, man, and I'm looking at this and I'm going, there's no way, that there's no way, as much as I'd love to go, hey, man, it's a run, and look, anything can happen, man. I mean, like, we're just sitting here talking about a 16 seed winning. Anything can happen, but anything short of of miracle, you know, somebody might, maybe they pass out the secret stuff in the locker room. The bottle of water gets passed around and they decide to go on a run here, but other than that, um, I don't see it, man, and I think VCU may drop them right in the first round as I was saying uh, VCU 14th toughest schedule in the nation here man that's the stuff that gets you ready for the tournament they played eight games against top 50 teams won five of those even the ones that you lose those get you ready there you know so um, and plus that's a team that's been there done that you know no reason to, to, to shortchange them and I just I don't even think the Buckeyes make it out of the opening round there. I don't. I don't want to be that guy, but but that's me. I think VCU knocks them off one and done in the tournament. 
Yeah, I'd have to go along with that. When I fill out my bracket, that's probably the way that I will go. Um, I'll do a Buckeyes you know, bracket. They're, they're, Don't get me wrong. I'll do a second arena, one. And, and you will you will look up and, yeah you will look up and down that Buckeye schedule uh, to try to find a quality win. And I don't know about you, but I got one. Uh, they beat Maryland. Yeah, well, uh, and you know, there you they, go. They, Where's that come from? You know, where you're like, well, huh, man, okay. But then yeah, I'm with so, you. So you know they and and really their schedule was pretty light. You know, they had Mark Pet on there. That's not if they're not even in the tournament. I don't think. Uh, and uh, Carolina and uh, Duke, and they lost to both of them. Uh, so uh, I will you know, say. You, you, oh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I was just gonna say, you know, even in conference, you look for a signature win, and, and they lost to Michigan. They only played Michigan State and Wisconsin. Uh, once a piece before the tournament, uh, ended up losing to Michigan State twice, Wisconsin once on the season. Maryland's really the only quality win in conference, and, and uh, that's uh, uh, not exactly a, a resume that uh, is, inspires confidence for the tournament. And I will say this, although historically this has nothing to do with what happens this year because it's always different players and stuff, but except for that big run by uh, by VCU that everybody remembers, uh, they they are first or second round outs a lot of years. So, I mean, they're a team that, that has had struggles getting out of the first game sometimes here, man. So that's, you know, that's something. But again, it's different teams and all of that. But maybe that neutralizes a little bit. But even then, you know, I just, I don't see unless... As you you know, you always talk about when whoever's got the best individual player on the court always has a chance to win, especially at tournament time. But I just think even with D'Angelo Russell, I think looking at the film of the games that the Buckeyes have lost this year, you you get the game plan for how to beat them. Yeah, that's true, and and that is to double Russell. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, if he can't beat Buckeyes, you, nobody else you know, can. Make, yeah, yeah. Make somebody make somebody else beat you, and, and teams have had success. Uh, doing that so yeah uh like you i don't have a lot of confidence there uh and it's a brutal uh it's a brutal regional to start with uh and uh yeah i, I you know if they if they win a game i'll be happy uh they shoot a but, ton of threes uh, by the way vcu i don't know if you think that plays into the the buckeyes favor or against them i guess it depends on how they hit the boards uh but over 40 percent of their shots on the season were three pointers for vcu so they're definitely a high volume three-point team and they shot 34 percent on those threes for the season yeah and that's not bad and, and certainly a high scoring team uh yeah buckeyes struggle to buckeyes struggle to score points and and uh you know, because they have no inside game and and they're not that great a shooting team. So, yeah, if if they're hitting thirty four percent and they're taking forty percent of their shots, I that's a recipe for trouble for sure. And the other thing I worry about is defensively, and you know Shaka Smart and what he does anyway. But they force sixteen and a half turnovers a game, ten steals a game, second best number in the country defensively in steals. Yeah, that's pretty impressive. Uh, you, you've obviously got more homework done on BCU than I have. <laughs> well, we'll talk uh, about it deeper on Wednesday, right before things get started. But those are just a couple of the 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 you know upfront numbers. Just throwing them out. Those are yeah. all reasons that I go. I don't know how the Buckeyes win unless D'Angelo Russell goes video game, and then anything can happen. Of course. Yeah, that's true. Like you say, they they pass around the right kind of uh, magic potion beforehand. Uh, you know, Mata's Mod- a Mod- good coach, and maybe he can get more out of him. But really, the biggest criticism of Mata this year is the sort of uh, underwhelming uh, development of the players that are seniors on the team. And it's not just the two fives, uh, Williams and McDonald, but it's guys like Sam Thompson and uh, you know kids that are graduating that really just never gave you what they what they showed you in terms of their promise early on, and. Uh, so, you know, these seniors, if they've got something left, maybe it's time to, to bring it up to the for, forefront and, uh, and give them one last show. But, uh, yeah, like you say, those numbers that you're quoting for VCU certainly aren't encouraging. And we'll see. I, I'm just uh, I'm excited to have a, uh, a regional final here in Cleveland. That's going to be great. I have no plans necessarily yet to, to, to go up there. Maybe, maybe uh, get lucky and score a ticket. But uh, <laughs> just having it in the local area, it's great for the, uh, great for the city, great for the economy. And, and the matchups yes. could be awesome, like we said. Absolutely, you know, and and the, I was there the last time covering it when they were here, and that one that one was fun because I enjoy those opening rounds because of the mass volume of basketball. I enjoy having all of those games, and so being there live, you've got all of those teams. You get a chance to see eight teams over the course of a weekend. A couple of times, um, I remember that weekend. Obviously, Ohio State was here. Um, Jay Crowder was here with Marquette, and I got a chance to see him. That was the year he got drafted to a. 
to the NBA. A couple of other good players were here during that. But you trade volume for quality here in this one. As instead, you only get four, but it's the it's the it's the four deciding who's going to head to the final four. You know. Yeah, that's great. A, a bunch of guys. I, I've gone on a. Uh a southeastern trip in the spring, a bunch of guys, friends of mine, and we'll take uh, 20 or 30 guys down to uh, either a first-round game or a a Sweet 16-round game uh, venue. And I've been to to, uh, Tampa and Atlanta and Greenville, South Carolina, and Charlotte uh, over the years, several different venues, usually southeast regionals where we go because we want to combine some golf with our basketball. Uh, And – it's, if you haven't ever been to an NCAA event, you really owe it to yourself to go. There's nothing quite like it. Uh, all the various fan bases coming in and sitting in their sections, and you got every team's got their pet band, every team's got their cheerleaders, and just the uh, the, the pomp and yeah. ceremony and circumstance of yep. uh, of the event with uh, with the colleges and their 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 bands and their followings and their colors. Uh, it, it's just a spectacle that uh, not to be missed. And of course, if you love the the game of college basketball, obviously, if you can see, like you said, uh, eight games uh, in a in a two day period. Yep. Uh, if you go to that those first round venues, it's awesome uh, just to see the uh, nonstop action, and and uh, there's always some some high drama uh, to go along with it. So it's uh, definitely recommended if you've never done that. Uh, go 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 do it somewhere, and and the first round is especially good because, like you say, it's. Uh, it's a quantity uh, and and some quality too. Obviously, yeah, yeah. this this stage of the season, these are good teams, and and to see eight games in two days is uh, just hard to beat. Even that was fun sitting down watching the first round and going, "Oh, cool! These these this team and this team and this team and this team would be some good matchups." There was, like you said, yeah, it's all actually, the more, it's actually, all it's that, actually six games and six games in two days. Six games in two game. days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eight teams, four. six games. Yeah. Right. Right. And uh, a lot of fun, most definitely. And um, you guys definitely. No, wait, the one in Cleveland here. No, that was over four days. That was the whole well, four-day no, weekend, the, wasn't the, the, it? The, oh, that's right. Yeah, you'd go Thursday, yeah. Friday, and then you follow yeah. up with a Saturday, Sunday. Right. Yeah, it's it whole, was it's two on Thursday, two that. on Friday, and then Saturday, and then Sunday. Yeah, exactly. That yeah. was how they broke it down. And then the teams from Friday played each other on uh, Sunday, you know, Sunday, the teams from Thursday on Saturday. But it was great, as you said. And if you guys can go, I highly recommend that you do, although you're not going to get to this one most likely. <laughs> but next time you get a chance, go check it out. Hey, I got a couple minutes left with you here before you got to go, Dan. Uh, Indians, spring. Hey, real quick for you, Indians. Al Rosen passed away over the weekend. Obviously, one of the legendary um, Indians figures in his career. I When I saw the... Uh, the news come out the first thing that popped in my head is he was in my head already because we did the trivia of course two weeks ago and one of the questions he was the answer for having played his entire career here in cleveland the last player to win to to win an appearance in an all-star game and do it his entire career in an indians uniform that was al rosen of course he was the al mvp and uh just missed the triple crown all of those things uh 91 years old so it's not one of those tragic passings it's what what happened in life, but still a great uh, member of the Indians organization. Yeah, you're right. He was also the answer to that other trivia question about who was the first Indian on the cover of Sports Yes, Illustrated. your your question. Uh, yes, absolutely. Yeah, and uh, yeah. In fact, I uh, I posted on Facebook over the weekend uh, an article from the Tablet magazine. The Tablet is a, a magazine basically highlighting uh, uh, Jewish people and Jewish uh, issues. Uh, and of course, Al Rosen, one of the more famous Jewish players in Major League Baseball. In fact, when he came in, he was sort of billed as the next Hank Greenberg, uh, and and has been referred to as the the greatest Jewish player between Hank Greenberg and Sandy Koufax. And uh, it, it was interesting because they point out in the article that when he was with the Indians later in his career, the general manager of the Indians at the time was Hank Greenberg. Yeah, and. Uh, and Hank Greenberg really, I guess, uh, tried to trade him or tried to give him a gave him a choice between a trade and a pay cut. Uh, and uh, and Rosen didn't want to take a pay cut. He ended up retiring kind of prematurely. He only played ten seasons. Ten years. Think and, about and, that. Ten yeah, years. He, he had man. had some he had had some physical problems, uh, uh, injuries, and then he kind of uh, they said he kind of pressed and put some pressure on himself, and it kind of didn't help. And he kind of got got uh, out of whack mentally as well as physically because of the injuries, and. Um, and just decided when he was kind of confronted with uh, with the ultimatum that he would just go ahead and retire and did that. Of course, then became a, an executive. He was later on president of the Yankees. 
uh, for a time and, and worked in the front office of the New York, of the San Francisco Giants as well and, and ended up with a World Series ring there in the, in the late 80s. But, uh, hey, Dan, yeah, when you said that, did you know? Player. Did, no, just to jump on what you just said, did you know he's the only person in the history of baseball to have earned MVP as a player and basically the same equivalent, the executive of the year in the front office? He was executive of the year 1987 when, as you said, he was on top of the San Francisco Giants as the president and general manager. But he is the only player in baseball history to have been an MVP player and a top executive of the year in Major League Baseball. You, you got to save that for next year's trivia contest. I guess. Absolutely. It's funny you said that because I already made a little note about that. I said, man, there's another Al Rosen trivia question right there, man. But uh, that'll speak to him as well. Uh, and the Indians had a great quote here uh, when they sent out the press release uh, from Al Rosen when he was asked about his legacy in the game of baseball. All he wanted to be known was a man who played hard and worked hard. Yeah, that's uh, that's really something that's, you know, R.I.P. Uh, is all you can say. Uh, a life well lived, certainly 91 years old. Like you say, it's not one of those yes. tragedies. <laughs> Uh, Give me but, 91 uh, years and I won't complain. You know, I will. Exactly, I will yeah, say thank you exactly. very much for the extra time. You know, but uh, most definitely uh, wanted to talk about that with you a little bit. I said, "Wow, just uh, fresh in the mind." We had him in the trivia contest, and and he passes away there. Just another uh, link to the past, and that's what happens. You know, and that's why that's why we do stuff like that to try to keep those names alive well after people stop talking about them. Um, Dan, things are wrapping up. I know we're running out of time here. Nick Swisher, your boy, you, you said something on Facebook the other day uh, about the, the 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 length of time and all of that getting him back. I I, I can't lie. I knew he wasn't going to be ready for opening day. I said it when we started talking about baseball, and uh, my gut told me there wasn't a chance that he would be ready. And I'm pretty sure that's the way it's going to work out. Yeah, and all I said as as you saw was you know I'm just scratching my head a little bit. I you know, arthroscopic surgeries, you know, don't normally take uh, seven months to recoup from. Um, <laughs> and, and so, so I don't I don't know if it was something that was, you know, maybe, you know, we don't know the nature of the surgery. They don't release that kind of information uh, typically. Uh, so, you know, but most arthroscopies are, are a little uh, nip and tuck here and there, clean up some cartilage, uh, you know, buzz off some, some calcification deposits or whatever. And, and, uh, and then get in and get out, and, and uh, you know, you, you take six to ten weeks to come back. And so I don't know why it's taken seven months before the guy can play in a baseball game. But um, you know, I, again, it's not a knock on him. It's just I'm curious about no, it. Yeah. Maybe those procedures were much more serious than, than what we thought, and or maybe they're just uh, you know erring on the side of caution to uh, to a great degree. And and uh, but yeah, it sure does sound like uh, like he's not going to be on the opening day roster. And uh, you kind of wonder who will uh, who will get his spot. Uh, we now see that Zach Walters out for a few weeks too, several weeks. They say I was going to ask you about ob- that. Ob- yeah, ob- oblique pole. I'm sorry to hear that. Cause I-, I like the kid. Uh, I think he would have made the so roster. That- by the way, I think you were right. I think he would have made the roster had he been able to keep doing what he was doing. I think Walters was going to make the final roster. Yeah, as it is, uh, certainly opens up the door for either a. Uh, a Rayburn or a Murphy, or possibly even a Tyler Holt to to make this team as a fourth outfielder, and uh, certainly you know you're going to have to put two outfielders on the uh, uh, on the roster now. A uh, you know Holt's a no brainer. Uh, consider that maybe maybe yeah. Moss might end up being a little bit more of a regular DH to start the season, which would mean that a Rayburn and or a, a Murphy Rayburn will make it, and maybe another guy, or at least two out of Holt Rayburn Murphy Ramsey. You think out of those four guys, maybe two of them are going to make the team, and, and the other two won't. But uh, I think that, that's at least has my a spot locked up. I think Holt has one of those spots locked up. I think that he, as long as he keeps playing well, I think that he, you know, hey, what about Francisco Lindor? He is he is not letting people stop talking about him, no matter what the Indians have planned. Man, he is just continuing to do some stuff and make that decision incredibly tough. He is telling the Indians, "Hey, I'm ready to go." Yeah, he sure is. So, did you see Peter Gamet's tweet yesterday? Uh, ah, yeah, Mon Dieu, he said. You know, in French, my God, uh, Francisco <laughs> Lindor. He must have seen the video of the inside the park. The home inside the park home run. And, yeah, yeah. And, and, and you know, with a little flourish at the end with the head first slide in the home plate. Well, there wasn't even a throw, uh, and because uh, he didn't, he didn't know that coming into the plate. But yeah, you love to see that stuff, and like you say, making the decision all the all the harder. But 
you've got the attention of everybody uh, around the nation. When you have Peter Gamut tweeting about you, uh, you know, you, you're doing something right. So, yeah, I, uh, you just love to see it. I, you got to believe that it's going to be 4th of July before we see him here in Cleveland, but uh, he's not going to go without a fight. No, absolutely not. Uh, it was good seeing Josh Tomlin still healthy a little bit over the weekend. I was worried about him, especially now that spot's going to open up. I, I know you got to go here uh, with the pitching. I think it's no brainer now. Uh, TJ House has got himself a spot in this rotation, um, and it's down to everybody else now continuing the fight for number five. Does that you do you agree with that assessment or no? Oh yeah, I do. I think uh, you know I, I was I was wondering why they were uh, why there was even a question about that based on the the August and September that TJ House had last year, and he's come out this spring and just done more of the same, uh, yep. keeping the ball down, keeping it in the park, and, and uh, keeping his team in the ball game. So, yeah, I think you're right. It's really down to probably Salazar and anybody else, and McAllister and Tomlin or whoever, fighting it out for number five, but I think House has his spot. Yeah, you know what? You and I can have a lot more of this. I know you've got to hit the bricks. I appreciate you joining us, Dan. We'll talk about this, and we'll get a little deeper into the X's and O's here for Ohio State as they attempt to uh, survive and fly here throughout the the tournament, and we'll look really into all of the uh, first-round matchups as well when we talk on Wednesday. Okay, sounds good, Jerry. Thanks for having me. See you later. You got it. My man, Dan Wismar, you guys, uh, he's got a previous commitment. That's why he joined us early, and we did it as early in the in the early part of the show. I see Bruce. Absolutely, you know what? A couple of questions over. You know what? I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not, I'm not that uh, worried about Trevor Bauer with what he's seen. I'm more worried about, uh, uh, well, you know, in general, uh, just how this is going to work out. Bruce Chen, by the way, didn't do himself any uh, any favors over the weekend there too. He was looking looking all right until. Uh, until he started to lose his control there, gave up runs in uh, three straight innings and a solo home run as well. But I'm not tripping about Bauer uh, just yet. Uh, I know he does keep giving up the long ball, and I wonder how much of that is how much of that is an element of the monkeying around that especially he does in spring training as far as tweaking himself. I don't know. How much is he getting ready for the season? How much is he doing his, because y'all know he does his science experimentation on himself, which is cool. I like a guy that is that in tune with himself and his, his style and his all of that and uh, he takes it to a, a whole other level with the, uh, not just advanced metrics but ergonomics and all that stuff that he involves, but uh, I wonder how much of that you don't know, but what do you have? Five innings, four hits, uh, gave up the, the home run there, no walks, a couple of three, four strikeouts. I thought it was a pretty strong appearance otherwise. I like what we're seeing from Trevor Bauer. But, yeah, he's given up a few long balls. I know he gave up the three in a row there. Uh, was that about a week, a week and a half ago? Speaking of long ball, uh, a couple of home runs. We just mentioned the inside the park jobber there by Francisco Lindor. Santana got a hold of a ball as well. David Murphy had an RBI single yesterday. Um, Will Myers was who had that home run off of Bauer in the fifth. Up until that point, Bauer was uh, was rolling, man. And uh, I don't know. What do you guys think? We'll talk more about this tomorrow. Jeff Gorman from Indians101.com is going to be in the house. We'll really dive into the Indian spring training with about you know two and a half weeks to go here until we hit opening day coming up. We'll talk more about that race for the four. I don't think it's a race, as we just said. I think it's house for sure. I think it's just for that fifth spot. And the more I think about it, I don't know that I don't know that that uh, Danny Salazar breaks camp with this team. We're going to talk about that. I want to bring that up tomorrow. Jeff Gorman's going to be in the house. We'll talk about Nick Swisher, his coming around, all of that as the Indians continue to roll towards opening day. We're going to take a break. Get you some news. I'm opening up the phone lines. 216-539-7535. 216-539 seven five three five get in on anything you want to talk about whatever we've been talking about if you want to talk some march madness you want to talk a little bit about the tribe you want to talk some browns when we come back i'll update the latest on them as they continue to have Bo trapped in a closet in berea they're not letting that man go and i'm telling you man right now they go will you sign the contract no the no soup for you 
and uh, somebody needs to free that man. Just sign the contract, man. Sign your life away. No, having some fun with the fact that the Browns aggressively pursuing Dwayne Bowe here. And uh, we'll talk about that. We'll talk some NFL here. More stuff goes on over the weekend. Tremont Williams also in from the Packers. He's also a veteran cornerback, and uh, that could be something that brings some more veteran. Hey, you gotta, you definitely need at least one more veteran corner, I think, in that secondary, especially if you're going to bank on uh, Gilbert being right in that starting slot. We'll talk about that. We'll take your calls. What do you think? Anything you want, phones are open as we roll on with the Sports Fix. Plenty more to talk to, plenty more to get into when we come back after the news here on The Fix, baby. unlock this door with the key of imagination. Beyond it is another dimension. A dimension of sound. A dimension of mind. You're moving into a land of both shadow and substance, of things and ideas. You've just crossed over into... The Sports Fix. We'll be right back. It's an addiction. The Sports Sports Fix. Fix. We'll be right back. Today on Save on Taxes, we ask 100 people what costs less than filing your taxes with IRS Free File. A car seat. Oh, a pair of shoes. The correct answer is nothing. When you use Free File, you get brand name software, tax prep, e-filing, and help with the new health care provisions all for free. So did we win anything? Everybody wins. Freefile.irs.gov. It's fast. It's safe. It's free. Business owners and professionals, do you want to take your business, your product, your team, your event to the next level? You want to advertise right here with the Sports Fix. Our listeners are among the most loyal listeners, terrestrial or internet. The Sports Fix universe is not only the radio show, but tens of thousands of fans on Facebook and Twitter. Email me, Jerry Myers, the Sports Fix at AOL.com. That's the Sports Fix at AOL.com. And let me help you swing for the fences and hit it out of the park right here on the Sports Fix. Whether it's an oil change or a new set of tires, Quick Lane at Valley Ford Truck has you covered for your car care needs. They're your neighborhood quick service experts. They also offer a low price tire guarantee. Choose from 13 brands, and if you find the same tires at a lower price within 30 days, Quick Lane at Valley Ford will refund the difference. 5715 Canal Road, right under the 480 Bridge in Valley View. Come see why life is better in the Quick Lane. Quicklane.com slash Valley Ford Truck. Portions of the Sports Fix brought to you by Signs and Ship, the official printing source of the Sports Fix. Locations in Ohio, Pennsylvania, Virginia, and Florida. Find out more at signsandship.com. News break. Good morning, I'm Bob Picosi. 39 years, that's how long it has been since a men's college basketball team ran the table. Will Kentucky be the first to do it since Indiana in 1976? The 34 0 Wildcats are the number one seed in the NCAA tournament's Midwest region. ESPN college basketball analyst Jay Billis was a guest co host today on Mike and Mike. If you really look at the, you know, objectively at what we say we want in a basketball team, we want somebody who plays for the front of the jersey instead of the back, and we want sacrifice and all these things, they're everything we say we want. They are everything we say we want. Kentucky begins play Thursday night in Louisville against the winner of the first four matchup between Hampton and Manhattan. Paul Hewitt coached Georgia Tech when the Yellow Jackets played in the NCAA championship game in 2004. This morning he was fired after four seasons as the coach at George Mason. He went 66 and 67. The field in the NCAA women's tournament will be unveiled during the selection show tonight at 7 Eastern time on ESPN. LeBron James will get treatment on his right knee today. He hopes to play tonight when the Cavaliers visit Miami 8 Eastern on ESPN. James landed awkwardly during yesterday's win over Orlando. Orlando. For over 60 years, Ferguson has been the name that pro contractors count on for plumbing, HVAC, waterworks, and more. They have the right products and the right people right around the corner. Put them to work for you at Ferguson.com. You're listening to the Sports Fix.
Welcome back to the Sports Fix Live. Rolling on an hour or two across the Sports Fix Radio Network. J-Rock back with you. Getting ready to. We're cracking open the phone lines here. 216-539-7535. 216-539-7535 is the number to call. Give me a call, guys. Let's talk a little bit. You know what? Wanted to get into the Browns. I had some guys ask me some questions at the start of the show on social media and Facebook and what's going on, the latest with the Browns and Dwayne Bowe as the Browns have had him trapped in the closet all weekend. I've been joking about it all day, but all weekend. I've had friends and I've got a guy in Berea. Uh, said, We're not letting this cat go, man. But uh, he came in town Saturday night, had dinner with the Browns. Dwayne Bow, wide receiver for the Kansas City Chiefs, and stuck around for the weekend. Browns uh, were dead set on not letting the fish get off the hook. I'm going to talk about that here in just a second. I want to hear from you. Facebook.com slash the sports fix. Tweet with us at the sports fix. C L E. Email us the sports fix at AOL.com. Facebook.com slash the sports fix. Tweet with us at the sports fix. C L E. Email us the sports fix at AOL.com. I'm not really in the mood today, you guys, to do the whole beating up and going backwards thing on the Browns right now. Um, they can't change. <laughs> I wish they could. What they've done so far, so neither can we. But we can keep moving forward, and today anyways, that's what I'm, I'm looking to do. Let's see uh, what's the next pieces in the puzzle. The Browns did pick up Brian Hartline. I'm not as down on that as a lot of people are, as long as you don't act like that's some, you know, Super Bowl winning move. You didn't exactly sign Jerry Rice. That being said, I think you may have brought a Brian Brennan type wide receiver into the Browns offense. And and I'll take anybody that can catch the ball at this point in time. Pretty much, I honestly feel the Browns traded in Miles Austin for Brian Hartline, to be honest with you. And if that's the case, then I think you slightly upgraded over the guy you had. I liked what Miles Austin did. I think that's what Brian Hartline's going to bring you. Problem is, is he doesn't get in the red zone. He's in the red zone. He's not a big touchdown in his career. He's not a big touchdown guy, but he'll catch a lot of passes in between that don't score touchdowns. And you, you got to catch a few of those too. Remember, we had Greg Little before. We had wide receivers who didn't catch the ball. So I will glad upgrade to one that does that being said Brian Hartline's an interesting piece add him to Andrew Hawkins add him to the couple of receivers that we do have in Travis Benjamin and Taylor Gabriel okay you've got the start of something you still don't have anything big you don't have any big size you got you got to think one of them comes in the draft, whether it's early, whether it's in the middle rounds. You got to think a big wide receiver comes in there size wise. When I say big, uh, Dwayne Bow, the guy that they've been talking to from the Chiefs over the weekend, he's 30 years old. He was a big, big salary cap hit for the Chiefs, so they had to let him go. He's been playing since the two, what was he 2007? He was drafted in the first round, a lifetime. Kansas City Chief uh, is Dwayne Bow. Uh, last two seasons, Andy Reid's offense, he's averaged 60 catches a year, uh, over 700 yards per season here. His best career, uh, best season in his career was back in 2010, 72 passes, 1,100 plus yards. Uh, the, uh, the Browns haven't had very many wide receivers in that category, period, with the exception of Josh Gordon. Now, of course, uh, Bo is not... Uh, to me, the same receiver at 30 that he was mm, three, four, five years ago. Obviously, his best season was in 2010, but he's not on the back end of his career either, as you hear. I'll, I will still take 58 catches and 700 yards if he'll bring that here to Cleveland. Now, here's why I do like Bo. I like him because he's a big receiver who can also be a, a dual threat at tight end. And I'm telling you, the Browns... J- just lost a tight end that's a hybrid wide receiver in Jordan Cameron, and they were able to go two wide rece- or two tight ends with Cameron and Barnage, where Cameron it can either be a tight end or act as a wide receiver. That ability is gone when you have Barnage and Dre as your tight ends because they're standard tight ends. They're much more standard NFL tight ends. They're good at what they do, but it's a different dynamic. Bo can be a wide receiver, but he can also be a big tight end type and add bow in at tight end with the smaller wide receivers cutting around and creating space. You could, you could see some interesting stuff guys being serious. I could see some interesting ways to fold Dwayne bow into the offense as a hybrid wide receiver and big tight end red zone target. We just said Brian Hartline's not that guy, but a big wide receiver that can go up. Will again, these are not, 
earth-changing moves, but you put them together, and you do have a basis of a competent receiving core there. I mean, really, look at that. Is say you took a guy like Bo and you add him to the heart line. Again, those are veteran guys. They're going to bring you each, you know, 30, 40, 50 receptions, 600, 700 yards, somewhere in there. Fold them in the mix with Andrew Hawkins, who I think we all agree was a good receiver for the Browns last year and has been a good pickup for them. And then you've got your young guy in Taylor Gabriel, Benjamin, whatever, and then you add a draft pick to that, whether you want to go big and look at Devontae Parker or Cooper in the early part of the draft or you want to start looking a little later or you want to try to cut the top off with a guy like Devin Smith from Ohio State. A lot of options you can go, but be honest, if we're not blasting the Browns, Tell me that that wide receiver core does not shine a whole lot better light than the one that they even went in with last season, let alone start going back two seasons and look at that wide receiver core. So my point is, is that you could do a lot worse than bringing in Dwayne Bowe because of the uniqueness of how he could also play the tight end position. So that's that's why I think he brings a little bit of value. That's all. That's, I'm not trying to sit here and go, yeah, 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 I'm being kind of looking at both sides of it. And the other one I'm not anywhere near as high on is Tremont Williams coming in from the Packers. And that's because Williams is 32 uh, at the defensive back position. Now he's very durable, as his agent pointed out over and over because of his age. He has only missed one out of 141 games. Now that is something to be said. Nine games, full-time starter for six of those nine seasons. He has only missed one game in nine years. That, That says something for durability, but I always worry about speed positions once you get to that 30, 31, 32, 33 area. Now, trust me, I know that some guys can stay great well beyond that, but that's where you worry. Now, uh, with his durability, hey, that speaks well for him. And he, he did play in a quality organization. You do need at least one veteran cornerback to come in and replace Buster Screen. So is it that guy? I don't know. I just worry about being on the back end. And hey, Dante Whitner showed he's still got gas in the tank. Williams may be a good one or two year stop gap because you lost Screen. That could fill the gap while you wait for Pierre Desir and Justin Gilbert to uh, to continue to develop. Let's go to the phones, talk about that and more. Caller, you're up on the sports fix. What's up? Who is this? J Rock Daddy, it's LG. How you doing, LGZ, brother? LGZ, what's happening, baby? How you feeling? Happy Monday to you, my man. Hey, I just got to ask you before we go on and talk about our favorite Cleveland team, the Cleveland of Browns. Course. Did you win the championship last night or what? Well, let's just let let let's just say to be continued. Let's just say to be continued. That's all I'm gonna say. Okay. I okay, can't. I can't let's I, talk I, about I, the I, Cleveland I, Browns for a minute, man. I got a new a new slogan. You ready for it? Ah, uh, LG. I'm trying to stay positive today. Go ahead, this LG. This is a positive slogan. It's a good <laughs> right. move. Just say no to Bo. You Repeat don't like Bo. Repeat after me, J-Rock. Try that. <laughs> Just say no to hey, Bo. You don't have to go too hard on that. I get it that he's not, you know, Dwayne Bo of No, no, listen, man. Listen, but... I don't want this guy to come to the Cleveland Browns. We get a little bit excited because, you know, there was a time when this guy was a good, dependable, big threat, big receiver. He's a big-bodied guy. He's capable. Yep. But he gets caught smoking pot, J-Rock Daddy. This is another guy that could come to the Cleveland Browns, and uh, he might celebrate that <laughs> Ray Farmer still loves him. The next thing you know, he's facing a suspension. I hear like you, Dallas LG. Gordon. Now, I do got to jump in because I'm pretty sure – that that sentence hits a whole lot of NFL players. So if we're not signing guys that smoke pot, dude, we may run out of players uh, in the whole NFL. I understand that, J-Rock, <laughs> but it's like this. It's, it's like this. Once you've been busted. No, I know. Like, the, oh, I know. Watch. Then the tests go up, and then you get caught more, and you get suspended. No, I know where you're you I know, was just making a joke. Those guys knew when their yeah. test was. They stay clean. You know how it works. You know I how know how it game. works. I know how it works, brother. Absolutely. But, but I'd be afraid to take a chance on a guy that has a known history of being busted. And you know, as well as I do, that if they get busted again, it's far worse than the last time they got uh, Not that. anymore. That's now, I do got to correct you. You're looking at the old rules. The new marijuana policy, 
Yeah, with the new marijuana policy, you basically get a clean slate every 12 months after a failure as long as you don't get a second one. So in all honesty, that really changed. Josh Gordon was a special case because he kept – it was like getting caught driving under suspension and then you get another suspension. He never got out of it and then he got nailed it again, you know, like – so you just keep making it worse. But that – so well, that's I'm not a little, so sure that – I'm not so sure that we saw any examples of this. What you're talking right now? Yeah, because well, it hasn't. It just started. This is the new. This is the new deal that started when they signed it halfway through last season. That was why Josh Gordon was allowed to come back at the end of last season. It was part of the exceptions that they made with the new policy that kicks in now with the new league year right. that just started. So yeah, you're you know, right. If, I completely you know, forgot. That we pot is going to be very to hard to fail for now. You'll still see some guys fail, but it's going to be very much harder for guys to fail. If they have any common sense at all, they should not fail for pot anymore. And even if they do, it won't cost them whole seasons of their career anymore like it used to. So I, I think that you can take that out of your worries. Now, is that your only worry? I'm sure it's not. That really is my only worry, Jim. Oh, well, then if that's the case... Old. That's my only worry because I just tell you right now, man, we, we got enough problems with guys getting suspended. And I forgot, you know, I totally did. I totally did forget that they ratified the agreement and how they're yep. going to do the drug testing now. Yeah, they're going to change that. Yeah, now, with, so. that, with that being said, I still don't know if I'd take a chance because you got to have a guy that's going to be there and play the football game. Uh, nobody does you any help if they're not there playing the football game. Now, the other case, you're right, I do have another concern. I'm going to put it to you right now, brother. Yeah. If you take Bo, will that make Ray Farmer shy away in this year's NFL draft of picking a good top-notch receiver? No, because I think part of the reason that you signed Brian Hartline and Dwayne Bo is to teach your young wide receivers. And I, I would think that you got to put the two together. I think you sign a Bo or a guy like that, and then you go draft a guy that you go, hey – uh, he's going to be that guy in three years, four years, whatever. And by the way, staying on the field, I will say this. Uh, Dwayne Bowe has been relatively uh, good at that throughout his career. His worst health season was 2009. He only played in 11 games uh, due to injury. Other than that, his last uh, four years, he or five years, he played 16-16, only played 13 in 2012 and then played 15 games each in the last two seasons. So he's been able to stay on the field. Uh, like, like I said, last three years, he's basically averaged 60 receptions and uh, about um, 740 yards or so uh, for the last few seasons with eight touchdowns. So that would be, he's averaged about three touchdowns a season. That's the only thing his touchdown production has dropped, but he's still been a guy. He's averaged 14 yards of reception in 2012, 12 yards of reception in 13, 13 and 14. So, you know, that's still a guy that can move the change. It's still a guy that can. he's got Alex ball. Smith throwing the football to him too, j Rack. Well, that's, I agree. I understand that. Well, you can't, we, we, we can't use that because we don't know. We don't even know who's going to throw the football, but the point is, is, would you rather, I mean, you have to sign some guys here. I just think, and, and you hear what I'm saying about Cameron. I think that Bo could give you a good hybrid guy. And I, I think Ray Farmer even said over the weekend that that's one of the things that they're thinking of when they're looking at Dwayne Bo is that he is a big body that you could also kind of slide into that Jordan Cameron dual threat role. Because think about it then, if you go two tight ends with him being one of the tight ends and you've got Barnage who can block or can catch passes out of the tight end, then you've got your wide receivers as well. It just really gives you back that threat that you had that you lose because you have to admit that Jordan Cameron, when healthy, is a great threat defensively to make the defense have to pay attention to him. Oh, there's no, there's, you know, losing Cameron uh, hurt my heart, J. Rock Daddy. Uh, what what hurt my heart even worse in the Cameron deal is how much praise he sung. If you read in between the lines, on the Dolphins, about Ryan Tannen Yeah, Ryan and Tan Tan yes, 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 yes. You know, I know exactly you know, what you're saying. He talked about ethic. how he was a he was a great guy and he's a great quarterback and working hard and all that stuff. Yeah, I heard what he said. You know, it yeah. makes me wonder. If there's something in the Cleveland Browns organization that Jordan Cameron really didn't care for, 
And For that's sure. one of the reasons he decided that he better off going with Tannehill because basically J Rock Daddy You know what? It wasn't a it wasn't an increased value move. It was Larry, you don't even have more. to think about that question any deeper than what you just said. If you got an equal contract and went elsewhere, then clearly that that answers your question right there. When the money's the right, same, that kind of that kind of makes know. me sick, man. Because yeah, uh, uh, I, I, I'm I'm telling you, man. I don't know what kind of season the Cleveland Browns are going to have. Uh, the draft is going to be very interesting this year. Uh, you know, I go back. Uh, you, you know, like you said earlier on the show today, you can't go backwards. But I go back to last year's draft. I know. And I, still think I about, know, Larry. But we can't live. Forget in, about it. Forget about who we did take. I, I can't believe who we, we didn't came. take. Who we didn't take That's is right. worse. Exactly, man. I right. know. Trust me. You know, I know exactly sad, what you're saying, sad brother. Me, Daddy. Sad me. I know exactly what you're saying, but. Uh, uh, you know, the Browns do. They seriously, they, I think that looking at what's left, looking at what's out there, looking at the way the cards have played, it doesn't look like Charles Clay is in the position where Cleveland's in his top two. It looks like he's looking at either staying in Miami or going to Buffalo. By the way, Buffalo just keeps making moves. They are completely overhauling that squad over there, man. And uh, that well, offense, forget, they, they just added Percy Harvin. Air. You got a did new owner see? in Buffalo. Well, did you see? They just added Percy Harvin over the weekend, and they uh, uh, have continued. They made the McCoy deal when they traded out Alonzo to Philadelphia. They just keep adding weapons into that offense. There's, there's a team right there, J-Rock Daddy, that surprised the heck out of me. It was the Philadelphia Eagles giving up Nick Foles to bring in the other guy. Sam I, mean, I really yeah. think Nick Foles hasn't even reached his full potential yet. I'm sorry, I lost the last part of what you said. I said I really feel Nick Foles is a quarterback that hasn't even reached his full potential yet in the NFL. This guy was a shining star, man. And, uh, you know, uh, I, I got to tell you, he was sitting there too when the Browns had a chance to draft quarterbacks. But I, I was surprised that the Philadelphia Eagles let go of Nick Foles in that trade. I just couldn't believe it. I couldn't well, believe they, it. To me, well, it's for the Eagles. Well, I don't get it either. My thought, and I know we don't like Shermer, but my thought really played into what I said on the show the other day. Pat Shermer, no, hey, his Sam Bradford's best production was when Pat Shermer was his offensive coordinator. Just because a guy fails at one job doesn't mean that there aren't certain combinations that work because chemistry and different things like that. Now, you can't always recapture that. We see it all the time. You try to bring a, a coach and a player back together, and it doesn't work the second time, like Mike Brown or Absolutely. whatever. But there's times that it does. Maybe maybe they have a good working relationship, and maybe Pat Shermer is going to be able to you know make that thing work because he is considered – good at that part of his job, even if we didn't like what he did as a head coach because he was in over his head and he had no business being in the job. But I'm not going to turn it down if they offer it to me, and he didn't turn it down when they offered it to him. But maybe that's got to be what Chip Kelly's thinking is he said, hey, what do you think, Pat? And Pat said, listen, if we're running this offense – Sam Bradford can do it. And yeah, think about that too. Maybe his skill set fits in. Or, hey, maybe it's a big setup and they're trying to convince the Browns to come in and make a trade or some other team. I don't know. Uh, but we'll have to see. That chessboard is still set up nice. But Buffalo, that's a team making moves. Philly, uh, the whole NFL landscape, and this is not dramatic talk. The whole NFL landscape has really shifted around a lot here in free agency. By the way, the 49 every team losing and then answering. The 49ers lose Frank Gore. They counter. They just signed Reggie Bush. I saw a, a report that they're signed to terms or they've agreed to terms with Reggie Bush to jump in and go uh, into that attack. Now, you know what? Reggie Bush and Carlos Hyde could be a good little one-two combination for San Francisco with a power back. Oh, there's and absolutely, then, uh, absolutely no doubt about that. That's J-Rock not bad. Daddy. I don't know what Reggie Bush still has in the tank. He's not totally done. Uh, he's he, he takes care of his body. So I, I could see that being a good plus. You got the young legs. And I think the 49ers have another uh, young back that uh, his name is slipping me as well that's part of that equation as well. But that's a good signing. Um 
And that's why I say, hey, look, Dwayne Bowe doesn't do the world for me, but you do have to not just sign guys. you got to fill some of these holes. You, you either need to sign two wide receivers and a quality tight end, or maybe Bo allows you to kill two birds with one stone, which is why I don't. You know what? Speaking of all this, I'm a little surprised that the Browns, and maybe it's because they were mad, and maybe the Dolphins is, is a persona non grata, but I'm shocked that the Browns didn't get in on the Mike. Not that I wanted Mike Wallace necessarily to Cleveland, but the Vikings got him for a song and a dance. The Vikings got him for like a fifth year. I think they swapped a seventh and a fifth year deal, uh, uh, draft pick in the deal. And so they basically gave Mike Wallace to, I think it was Mike Wallace and a seventh round pick to Minnesota for a fifth round pick. So basically they used Mike Wallace you had to move up a draft pick. And I'm like, man, that was a, that, maybe Miami knows something, but I think they just didn't think they could afford him coming up and figured they'd move him out of the way. But that's another one of those cheap wide receiver deals that you wonder about the Browns. Although by the way, given the Browns credit. And I told you guys, my guy in Berea told me at the end of the off season that one of the Browns first moves in the, in free agency or in the off season was to try to trade or work something out uh, uh, with Larry Fitzgerald and uh, there's word breaking out here this morning that, which I told you guys about at the time, but that they did indeed do that. And that right before Fitzgerald agreed to go back to, uh, to the Cardinals, there was an attempt to put a deal in place and get a sign and trade and get him sent over here. So the Browns have definitely been attempting to address the wide receiver position here behind the scenes. And that's what I said. The only thing with Bo that, that I like is that it allows him to play the multiple positions. And I think then you, you maybe make up a little bit of what you lost with the, uh, with the uh, Jordan Cameron deal. But, and the other one, Tremont Williams, like I said, not the biggest deal either, kind of like this one, but you do have to replace Buster Screen somewhere. I think if you, if you bring him in on a one- or two-year deal, I don't have a big problem with that. If he can play, great. Dante Whitner showed he could play. Carlos Dansby showed he could still play. Uh, if, the, if the guy can play, bring him in. He's been, I like a guy who's been in the Packers and, and been around a culture of winning. Bringing that into your organization has to be nothing but positive. Well, both Danes B and Whitney were positives last season, J Rock. It right. just it just happens that they're playing on the wrong side of the football. But what I want to <laughs> tell you is, you know, when you talk about the Browns reaching out and the Browns trying to do a deal with Larry Fitzgerald, uh, you know what makes me wonder, J Rock, how much of that's for show and tell and how much of that's for real? No, 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 Huh? It, no, signing is different. Now, signing is for public relations. No, no, no. What I was told is behind the scenes, they worked with Arizona to try to make a trade to trade for Larry Fitzgerald. So that is, to me, that's not necessarily PR stuff, you know, because they they didn't tell you about it. It's not like anybody knew about this when it was going on. This was a re- from two months ago, but it turns out now that while – Arizona wasn't sure if they could re-sign Larry Fitzgerald. The Browns and Arizona tried to put together a deal to trade him to Cleveland, but then Larry Fitzgerald, I think, said, wait a minute, I think these cats might be trading me to Cleveland, man. I'm I'm much more acceptable of working out a long-term contract right now, man, because I'm sorry. Look, really? What did I do? I thought you got – I could see them going to dinner and, and Larry Fitzgerald, they go, they go, Larry, you're quiet tonight. And he goes, guys – I thought I've been a good, I've been a good, a b- good cardinal all these years. You have, Larry. We love you. Why you gonna trade me to Cleveland, man? Why you gonna trade me to Cleveland, man? I mean, I thought you guys liked. I thought we were cool, man. No, but uh, I, I, hey, That's you know what? J-Rock, Daddy. Don't tell me that, that those hilarious. conversations. But don't tell me that those conversations don't really happen. I'm not making fun of Cleveland. I'm saying if I'm Larry Fitzgerald, oh, I've been playing in the NFL. Really I told you before yeah. when I had. When I had you know, guys like Levon Kerlin, Tony Bissett, Jr. Yes, Junior, that's what they uh, say. Uh, that's Tyler what they Law, say. My Cleveland yes. Sports 360 show. When I said that do free agents think about coming to Cleveland, all those guys started cracking up laughing, J-Rock Daddy. Now, Levon Kerlin was a Pittsburgh Steeler. Now, you know as well as I do, the weather in Cleveland is not no different, different than Pittsburgh. Than the... It's no different. Right. Exactly. And you know what he brings up? Well, the weather there kind of sucks. Like, well, no, and let me tell you, here's the funny thing. It has nothing to do with anything except losing and winning because Cleveland was a actually 
a, pro- a much worse overall city in the late 80s when the economy was still bad, when when the, a lot of the infrastructure, obviously, nothing was what we have now. And uh, and guess what? Nobody nobody had a problem coming to play for the Cleveland Browns back then. Nobody had a problem. You know what I mean? My point is, well, is when you're winning, winning and losing, Jay, that's, right? it. that's it. That's it. It's that's all, all there is to it. It's respectable owner of the football team that you can have respect for. And as bad as Art Modell was, every player that played for Art Modell has nothing but praise to say about the guy. I just, uh, I'll tell you what. I, I got. By the way, I'm laughing here. This this headline pops up as we're talking. Will the Browns lock up Dwayne Bow on his visit to Cleveland? I can literally see them every time. Bow's like, "All right, guys, I'm gonna I'm gonna drive to the airport now, and my agent will get back with you guys soon. I'm really liking things." Every time he says that, they go, "Hold on a second, Dwayne. Did we show you the the third office on the fourth floor? Here, come on for a second. I want to show you this real quick." They keep finding stuff to show him. Right now, he's at the zoo. They're walking him around the. Did you know that we had three elephants over here? Yep, Cleveland is the only city. They're just they're making excuses because they don't want to let him go because and and he's just hanging out because he's like, hey man, maybe if somebody hears that I'm in Cleveland, that thing that happened for Jordan Cameron will happen for me, man. It's just such a a a weird thing. I've been joking all day that they're waterboarding him. Are you gonna sign for us? No. You're gonna sign with us? Okay, man. Okay, but. Uh, I well, do one think, thing you got to remember, J. Rock. There's a relationship there between there is Ray, uh, Ray Farmer, Farmer came and, from and, Kansas and City, absolutely. And, uh, and I could see a realistic uh, uh, opportunity. I, I, I hate to use that word, opportunity. I could see a realistic possibility. There you go. That fits better because no, you're absolutely right. And I think that's why it could happen because when you have a friendship, then you can take the jokes aside and you can sit down with Ray Farmer and go, Ray, look. I hear the same thing that everybody else hears about Cleveland. Tell me the truth. What's is this thing? What's going on? Am I gonna, you know? And 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 you trust him to go. Hey, look, here's the plan. And you and then he decides whether he wants to go. But you're right. That relationship does actually give you a chance because unlike Jordan Cameron, think, who couldn't would... wait to get out, he respects Ray Farmer enough that he will not make him look silly in the media you know what i mean he's not gonna Mm -hmm. just screw like he may go somewhere else but he's not gonna do it in a shady way because he does have respect for ray farmer so i do believe that the browns have a legitimate shot and that they're not just being used for leverage and it's only because of what you just said because they do have a legitimate where you're gonna see how good of a salesman ray farmer can be that's it because you've got to sell him on the future You've got to sell him on where we're going, but you can't see it. You can't sell him on what we're doing right now. You got to go, listen, trust me, this is where it's going to end up. And then you've got to see if you can, like you said, can you convince him to buy the car before the paint job? Can you convince him that this car is going to look like that car when I'm done with it? You know? You know see, what I mean. I could see both. I could see both sitting in Ray Farmer's office right now, going, "But who the hell's going to throw me to football?" <laughs> <laughs> That's the that is the million dollar question, man. You know. And if I'm Ray Farmer, I'm playing the ego card all day long. Now, come on, baby. You know you can catch the ball from me. It don't matter who throws you the ball, baby. You don't need no quarterback. Come on, you're Dwayne Bo. That's that's. I'm sending him text messages all night long. If I'm Ray Farmer, going, baby, you're catching balls in your sleep, man. It don't matter who the quarterback is. We were thinking about going with no quarterback this season and just giving you the ball, man. Don't worry about it, baby. That's what I would do if I was Ray Farmer. I'm just saying that well, and a big I think fat they are check. Going with no quarterback this season. <laughs> well. <laughs> That, that was easy. That one was easy right there. But uh, anyways, hey, good stuff. And seriously, I do think you can sit here and go, well, who cares? The Browns don't need to sign this guy. Well, you say that too many times, and there's nobody left to sign. And then you're going to be complaining well, come in the training camp that they didn't sign any free agents. You have to do something. You have to sign somebody. Well, we did Dwayne sign Bowen. a free agent, J-Rock. That's right. I'm actually okay with re-signing John Hughes. I know we signed Thaddeus Lewis. I know where you were going. They did re-sign Johnny Hughes oh, over the Lewis. weekend. We got that quarterback from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. What's Josh McCown. Again? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they did re-sign Johnny Hughes. He's a good run stopper. He's good up hey, front. John Hughes was a big deal, if you want yes. my opinion, man. I re-signing think it's very Hughes. big. 
That yes. guy was a solid football player. And four years, uh, that 14, 14 million, I think, or something. But it's a four-year deal, and it locks up one of your good young defensive linemen. I think that was a great, uh, a great signing there. Those are the ones that you Stay don't right, care to Daddy. Hear. Here's what I want to tell you: signing yeah. guys on the defensive side of the Cleveland Browns should be an easy task right now because it's a good defense. The defense of the Cleveland Browns is a good defense, and they yes. do have some good quality football players. I so you agree. got Kruger, you got. You got uh, Dan- Dante Whitner. You got uh, Dansby, Carlos Dansby. I mean, you got some good Joe Hayden, for God's sake. And they I mean, don't do care who the quarterback quality. is. They don't care uh, who the quarterback is. They don't care. They just care about the defense, and the defense is halfway decent. You're absolutely right. I mean, and the defense for the Cleveland Browns was halfway decent. I, I really didn't want to see Buster Screen go. I thought this guy still had something in the tank. I, I, I think he's going to continue to get better. I would not be surprised in a couple of years if he stays healthy, if people talk to him on the same level that they talk about Joe Hayden. Because Buster Screen improved year after year after year. I mean, remember the first year, Jay Rock, we wanted to hang the guy up on a tree and shoot him. Remember that? Yeah, absolutely. But, uh, See, I'm just but I'm I still tell not you, man, to... he's, he's, he's definitely an improvement uh, in the making, and I was sorry to see him go, but... I tell you, signing a defensive player for the Cleveland Browns shouldn't be that hard of a thing to do, and, and you see that it's not because a guy like Hughes, Hughes could have went to a lot of different football teams. Jay Rack Day. He, oh, I know. He He's very valuable stay. run stopper. Absolutely, very valuable up in yeah. the front. Yeah, I mean this guy. This guy chose to stay with the Cleveland Browns, so that tells me that you know the defense isn't the concern, and we all know we all know the defense isn't the concern. Yep. So you want to know something funny, you know, LG? As we as we wrap this up, uh, I just remember you guys. By the way, he'll return to the show tomorrow. Doctor Football is going to jump back on. But for those of you guys that maybe are newer to the show and you go, "Hey, who's this Doctor Football guy?" He's a his dra- the draft is his thing, and I'll never forget he was on live with us on WHK the night of the draft when the Browns took what was, that was twenty was that eleven. 20, 2011 or 12 when they took Hughes. I can't remember off the top of my head. But uh, when they took him, it was, uh, I remember going through the, the middle round picks. I think they took Travis Benjamin in the same draft, if I remember right. But regardless, I remember Dr. Football going, everybody was making Hughes Brothers jokes, the movies, the, the directors and all that. But uh, he goes, he brought him up as perhaps the best of the Browns draft picks that night. And it, and everybody in the media was saying, oh, who's this guy? Never even, you know, didn't even give him a thought. Thought the Browns reached when they drafted him. But I remember Bill saying, hey, keep an eye on this name, John Hughes. This kid right here can go. And he was right, man. He has a, he has a motor for sure. But uh, anyway, well, hey, LG. i show you, J-Rock Daddy. The shining stars in the NFL are not necessarily number one draft picks or even drafted in the first round for that month. For that matter, yeah. uh, you look at Tom Brady. I mean, you know, Tom Brady's a perfect example. Russell Wilson, even Nick Foles, for God's sakes, wasn't drafted in the first round. These, these guys. Well, I mean, there are football players out there a, that maybe Nick don't Foles have the guy, big but... uh, the big marquee above their heads when they come into the draft. But somebody's got to be smart enough to do the research, find out who these guys are, and you got to nab a couple of them every year. Oh, for sure, man. You had me until you said Nick Foles. I wouldn't have put him in that same conversation, but I'm with you. All the all the He's great ones. We, we've done the, Jay hey, we, No, I know. I know. We've done the research before on where quarterbacks come from in the draft, and it is not the first round. I believe the second and the third round own more Super Bowl winning quarterbacks than the first round does, and so on and so forth. Well, that's why, um, uh, that's why these guys in the Browns, I know, oh, okay. I know. They put the, the study together, and then they didn't listen to it. I know, I know, no, LG. Exactly. They just got to realize, you don't keep wasting first-round draft picks. I mean, we we have wasted LG, so I many know. of them, J-Rock. I Daddy. know, I know, I know, I know, I know. By the way, uh, and that's the perfect setup for this, uh, Browns are actually going to end up with 14 draft picks instead of 10. So expect a lot of ammunition for some wheeling and dealing here because it looks like they're going to get four compensatory picks in the middle rounds of this draft to make up for the free agents that they've lost. Now, that could change depending on the value of the free agents they sign before the draft because you, you it balances out when you lose players and gain players. But as it stands now, the Browns have four 
freebies coming from the NFL that get sandwiched in between the middle rounds. So instead of 10, they're most likely looking at 14 draft picks now heading into this one, which, as I said, that now gives you that ammo to, to move up in those middle rounds, and I expect to see the Browns do a, a lot of that there. But uh, anyways, LG, my friend, anything else before we go? Anything non-Browns related, man? How you feeling? March Madness, well, does I, that get you going? I got to tell you one thing right now, J-Rock. I am so impressed, and I'll reiterate that. I am so impressed with this Cleveland Cavaliers basketball team. Oh, yeah. LeBron James and Kyrie Irving. I mean, this Kyrie Irving, you talk about a guy, I mean, that keeps getting better all the time, man. I'm not even so sure we've seen the plateau that this guy's capable of reaching yet, man. No way. This Cleveland Cavaliers basketball team is red hot. I mean, they're beating their opponents. uh, You know, I mean, sure, they got an (laughs) overtime win down there in in Texas. But, uh, you know, look at some of the wins these guys are pulling out against some of the teams they've been playing lately. And, and some of them are decisive victories. And I got to tell you something, man. I am so impressed with this Cleveland Cavaliers basketball team. I remember when we were first talking about James coming back and this, that, and the other thing, and how many years it may take to build a championship caliber Cleveland Cavaliers basketball team. Uh, you know what? This this seems to be happening a lot quicker than we were giving it credit for when that first news broke of James coming back to Cleveland. Don't you agree? You got to change. Yeah, but you can't even go there because I I said it a couple of weeks ago, I believe, along those lines. I don't think you can hold anybody, anybody to evaluations from then because that is not the same team. That team, Absolutely. If, the Cavs, if the Cavs don't make those trades, then I stick to what I said. A couple of years to build a winner because that team right. is not built to win a championship. Now, had you... Let's say we had the team that we have now starting the season. I think you would have seen people make different predictions because this is a team that clearly fills the gaps that the other team did. That's what makes that tricky because you can't even say, well, this is different than we thought because nobody told me in August that you were going to have, you know, Timofey Mozgov coming in on this thing and J.R. Smith and Iman Shumpert and the only thing we were going to ship out was Deion Waiters. Nobody told me that because that's a totally different team and then all of a sudden you have a chance to win this year if you get your chemistry together and we saw how scary quick they started to get their chemistry together but that's that's the tricky part of what you well, just said. Well you know said what you because... gotta give some credit to David Griffin because Amen. Um, that's why he's the executive of the year this year bro. You know when Remember when they put Griffin in the GM spot? Everybody was a little bit skeptical about that too, J. Rock Daddy. But this guy has proven to be a proven commodity for the Cleveland Cavaliers, and he didn't hold anything back. He put together a team that, uh, you know, I'm not so sure how far this team's going to go this year. I mean, you got to get to the finals, you got to win all those games. And, you know, you've talked a multitude of times to a multitude of guests that don't think there's a team out there that can beat the Cavs in seven games. so, you know, it, it, you know the tail of the tape hasn't been reached yet, but uh, uh, it's going to be an interesting postseason. That's all I got to say, brother. You got that right. LG, my friend, have a great one. All right, you too, J-Rock Daddy. Keep the good work up. The show sounds great, man. I'll talk to you soon. Be good. Thank you, my brother. That's LG from Cleveland Sports 360. Always great talking some sports with him, whether we're talking Browns, Cavs, whatever. And uh, no update here. I mean, I don't know if uh, Dwayne Bowe may still be locked in the closet in Berea. We'll see. Maybe by the time we get on here tomorrow, Dr. Football scheduled to join us, and hopefully we can have an update perhaps on him, Tremont Williams as well. We'll see. A lot of times, you know, Cleveland is the stop before you get to the one you're going to. Parrish Cox did that to the Browns last week. Cornerback came to Cleveland, went to Tennessee, and, and they didn't let him go. That's the secret. If you let him go, it's a lot harder to get him back than to just try to get that thing done before they head to the next place. Like I said, that look at, you know, Parrish Cox came here and was like, all right, I'm digging things in Cleveland. Let me go. Let me go have this visit with Tennessee real quick, and then I'll come back up here. And then he never made it back. So, 
Uh, don't let them leave, man. I mean, duct tape, just don't leave your fingerprints on it, and they'll never know who did it, man. But any, anyways, we'll talk about that. Let's take a break. Final break of the day when we come back. A lot to get into here. Monsters over the weekend. Cavaliers tonight. The Heat will set the stage for that. Vikings are going dancing, but uh, not March Madness, not uh, NIT. They're going to the next one after that. We'll talk about all of that, set the stage for tomorrow and more. Don't go anywhere. Final segment of the Sports Fix coming up next, baby. Hey guys, before we go to the break, I want to talk to you a little bit again about our good friends at Harry Buffalo North Olmstead, the UFC, the ultimate fighting championships, some of the hottest fights in the world today, each and every one of their huge events. Harry Buffalo is one of the few places in Northeast Ohio you can go there and watch each and every UFC fight at the Harry Buffalo. And let me tell you, I've been there. The people are out the door. They are to the rafters. It is one of the craziest environments for some UFC fights. Wing Mondays, they've got great deals on wings and drinks. And every day of the week, there's a different special, a different deal. And don't forget the Bison Burger, the unbelievable. It is the combination of a fantastic burger and eating healthy combined into one unbelievable sandwich you have got to get a bison burger while you're there so whatever you're looking for whatever day of the week monday through friday saturday sundays there's something for you at the harry buffalo north olmstead just outside great northern mall check them out today harry buffalo join the herd portions of the sports fix brought to you by fantasy jocks visit fantasyjocks.com your fantasy sports superstore championship belts rings trophies and more Fantasy sports lovers, you put so much time, hard work, and effort into playing week to week that it quickly stops being a fantasy and, and starts, starts getting, getting real. real. Real time spent making real decisions, creating real victory. I'm the greatest man in the world! And when the smoke clears, you want to show off those victories with a real prize. I mean, a really real prize. Yeah. Nobody, Nobody does, does that, that like, like Fantasy, Fantasy Jocks. Jocks. The crew over at Fantasy Jocks have beautiful, high-quality, and heavy-duty championship belts, rings, trophies, and so much more for all your fantasy sports needs. The trophy's 12 feet high, and it is glorious! Football, baseball, hoops, you name it, they have it. Plus, they have awesome draft kits and party supplies to make all your preseason activities the envy of everyone. If your league needs a ring, belt, or trophy, or you want to upgrade what you already have, there's literally only one place to go. If you're going to be a fantasy jock, do it right. It's mine. The most magnificent belt ever created. And it's mine. With America's fantasy sports superstore, fantasyjocks.com. The Sports Fix is now available every day on the world's largest internet radio service, iHeartRadio. Download the free iHeartRadio app, subscribe to the show, and get your fix. I'm Pro Football Hall of Famer Paul Warfield. There's just one place where students are students first and athletics are played with purpose and perspective. That place is your local high school. High school sports help young people become confident leaders and role models and use the skills developed today to do even bigger things in life tomorrow. High school sports, a winning part of a complete education. This message presented by the Ohio High School Athletic Association. In baseball, miracles can happen when a team works together. Two out, bottom of the ninth, down to their last strike. The same is true in the fight against cancer. That's why MLB has teamed up with Stand Up to Cancer. Because we believe that when we all stand up together, 41,000 on their feet, we can make cancer history. Now everybody's standing. What a buzz in this building. This is beyond a dream. Stand up with MLB at StandUpToCancer.org. Hey, Cleveland, this is Ed Doherty, voice of San Ignatius Wildcat Football, and you're listening to the Sports Fix. 
This is the Sports Fix. What is your name? I'm the dude. So that's what you call me, you know? Uh, that or uh, his dudeness or uh, duder or, uh, you know, El Duderino, if you're not into the whole brevity thing. Dude, what do you want? Uh, well, it's uh, this rug I have. It really tied the room together. Uh, we are not a show to be swept under the rug. We are a show to be heard. It's the Sports Fix. Fix. Welcome back to the Sports Fix. Wrapping things up here across the Sports Fix radio network. J-Rock back with you. Thank you guys for being with us. Thanks to Dan Wismar from the Cleveland Fan in the first hour for joining us. LG called in last segment. Good stuff. Thanks to all of you guys with us on social media out there as well throughout the uh, throughout the live portion of this. I look forward to hearing from you guys in the delayed broadcast as well. Uh, Ron Graham in the... Uh, Friends of the Sports Fix page posted The Onion. Uh, The Onion is a spoof site that puts out uh, um, (laughs) spoof stories, uh, you know, uh, comedy stories that look legitimate. Uh, They put out one along the lines of what we were just joking about last segment. Uh, NFL Players Association receives numerous complaints from free agents harassed by the Cleveland Browns, expressing their ever grow. And this is a complete parody. It's a joke, you guys. So nobody think this is a serious article. Expressing their growing concern after being inundated by grievances throughout the past week, officials from the NFLPA today confirmed they've received multiple complaints by free agents about harassment from the Cleveland Browns. We've heard heard from free agents around the league who have gotten unwanted and aggressive overtures from the Browns front office and coaches. These allegations include calling potential free agents at all times of night, leaving long rambling messages on their voicemail and mailing them numerous Browns jerseys with their name and number already stitched. Several players have complained that Browns officials are offering them flights to Cleveland and treating them to expensive dinners and nights on the town. They just won't take no for an answer. (laughs) One distressed, distressed free agent called claiming that Browns general manager Ray Farmer has been standing on his doorstep with a contract for the past four hours and just refuses to leave. It's 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 funny because it's tongue in cheek and we can do it to ourselves. Um it's when people get nasty on the outside that of course uh you get the fangs up about it a little bit. But it is that is when it's done in a parody, that is funny because the it's a way of taking a nasty narrative and at least putting a little little chuckle on it but you you could literally see Ray Farmer standing on a doorstep hey every time a guy looks out the window damn he's still there he's still there he won't go I gotta get out and get some milk I gotta feed the dog I gotta get the mail I can't leave the house man but uh maybe maybe they'll let Dwayne Bow out of the closet today and uh Add another free agent here to the uh, to the Browns Hall, but it is funny. Anyways, we posted it on our uh, social media. Ron Graham put it out there, a little spoof article from the Onion. All you got to do, seriously, is just stop. Just turn it around. You start winning some games. As soon as that happens, that goes away. Again, that goes into why people are so frustrated because I think they felt a year ago that it was starting to go away and and that the potential was really there for something to just build and just turn into something decent. So when that goes away, that goes away. But until then, um, (laughs) you do get a, you do get you get the good with the bad, but that one's at least a much more uh, comical way of putting it there, guys. Welcome back into the show. uh, As we get things going here, wrapping things up, looking back to this past weekend, the Monsters, the Lake Erie Monsters. Doug Plagans is going to join us here from the Monsters as they've had the Texas trip going on. They've got one more left here. Thus far, Monsters have uh, done pretty well at the uh, at the uh, uh, back and forth on this thing here. They were able to uh, take care of business from San Antonio over the weekend. Lost one as well 
Um, not as good of a trip. Excuse me. I, I completely uh, said that backwards. They have not done as well as they could have in this one, uh, but continuing to pluck along as they've got Texas coming up here a couple of days off before they finished. They started this trip with the Stars. Calvin Pickard had an incredible game the other day as the Monsters blanked San Antonio 4 to nothing. Pickard had the shutout. Uh, just a great performance from him. However, the Monsters were turned away the next day 5-2. to two. So San Antonio gets the split from the Monsters. Now they've got the back end of this. You've got Texas coming up. The Texas won the first one 6-4. to four. Monsters really need to salvage that last one here. Get a split out of the entire trip. And uh, grab as many points as you can here on your way out of it because uh, that team is directly in front of you here as I... I'm going to pull the standings up so I make sure I give you the accurate points here. But looking at coming out of this, uh, coming out of this stretch here, the Monsters now sit 12th in the conference. They've got 62 points. Now a little bit of separation as they were only four points out a week ago at this time from the eighth playoff spot. Hamilton has now got 69 points on the season. Now remember, though, uh, many of these teams have more games to play than the Monsters. Hamilton has three games over the Monsters, so those games in hand will even things out. But right now, Monsters are seven points back of the eighth and final playoff spot as both teams that they played this weekend. San Antonio was already well in the middle of the playoff hunt. They sit four right in the middle, uh, but Texas has now rose through this weekend into it. Remember, they were ninth heading into the weekend outside looking in, just like the Monsters. Texas has gotten on a run here. They've now got 70 points, and they've moved up to seventh place in the conference. They're now, if the season ended today, they would make the playoffs. The Monsters would be on the outside looking in, so it's a big one here. You can't let Texas get another uh, couple of points on you there. Monsters need to finish this road trip strong and then start to get down the home stretch. I mean, here you are. You're up into the 60s now with games played. You'll have 15 games remaining after that game with the Stars is coming up on, uh, what was that, Wednesday? Thursday. No, tomorrow. Excuse me. They're playing tomorrow. That's what I thought. I've got my dates wrong from over the weekend. Today's the 16th. Monsters have a Tuesday getaway there with the Texas Stars. Then they trek all the way from near south of the border to north of the border as they head up to Toronto, take on the Marlies end of this five-game road trip. We're going to get Doug Plagans in on the show. Uh, if not tomorrow, then we'll get Doug in on Wednesday, and we'll uh, catch up on all the Monsters action here from over the weekend, an up-and-down trip so far in Texas. Uh, let's see. Cleveland State Vikings, as March Madness is announced for everybody, and then the NIT is announced the Cleveland State Vikings are going to play, not in the NIT, but for the second year in a row, the CIT, which is the CollegeInsider.com tournament. Second year in a row here for the Cleveland State Vikings to make this tournament. Sixth time in the past eight seasons that the uh, Vikings have done that here. These are the teams right in the that mid-major area that fell at the bottom of the cut for the NIT. 32 of the top mid-major teams in the nation. And it's a good first round matchup for the Vikings. If you're a Hoops guy, if you're a Vikings guy, Western Michigan from the MAC, of course, they fell in the MAC tournament. They lost to Akron in the second round of that one. Western Michigan had a 20-13 and 13 record this season. It's only the fifth time these schools have ever played each other, and they haven't met in decades, literally. 1974 was the last time Western Michigan t- took on the uh, Cleveland State Vikings. Western Michigan won that one, so this will be a good one. It's going to be Wednesday night, so we can talk more about it here later on this week. But you've got the Vikings and Western Michigan Wednesday, the first round of the CIT, the College Insider Tournament. Of course, the big dance is going on. Don't forget, you guys, our bracket challenge as well. Go to ESPN.com, look in their groups on the tournament challenge, and find the sports fix, and make sure you enter your bracket, the same bracket that you enter everywhere else, Enter it with us as well. We've got a Cleveland Sports prize pack going to the winner. Uh, a nice little pack. It'd be a couple of books from our man Vince McKee and uh, his latest on LeBron James, Redemption of the King, and uh, his Cleveland's Finest as well. It's a couple of other goodies I'm going to mix in there. And we're going to hook up the winner of this year's challenge with the Cleveland Sports prize pack. It's free to enter. There's a nifty little prize pack for the winner. So jump in there, you guys. We put the links out on all of our social media. We'll do it all week long. You've got up until tip off of the first game come Thursday for you to get in for the Sports Fix Bracket Challenge. All you do is go to ESPN.com, 
Go to their tournament challenge, find the group titled The Sports Fix, and drop your bracket and join that bad boy right there. Or directly click the link right on our Facebook or Twitter or any of the places that we put it out there. Get in, and we'll talk some more about it and remind you guys all week long, The Sports Fix Tournament Challenge, baby, as we roll into March Madness. My favorite time of the year. So many basketball games. You just, it's overdose, overload on basketball for the next couple of weeks here. Cannot wait. Speaking of that, more basketball tonight as you're waiting for the tournament. The Cavs will oblige you with a matchup with the Miami Heat. Third matchup this season between these two teams. We've seen the storylines going to Miami, coming back to Cleveland. Completely different both teams here at this point in the season. Miami's season changed a ton. They made the Dragic trade. Then they lost Chris Bosh, and it really just changed the course of everything for them here this year. Meanwhile, the Cavs made those deals we talked about we we already know change the course of what they've done as well uh meanwhile will lebron james play as we heard during the 30 30 update there in the middle of the show uh gonna give it a go gonna get make it a try i would not i would not blame the Cavs at all if he sat out i think if he does play the only push would be you know, playing in Miami and the fact that he played there before, maybe he wants to get out there or whatever. But uh, I also wouldn't be surprised if the Cavs didn't. I mean, really, you sat love the other day, yesterday, you know, sit LeBron tonight. But, you know, uh, that'll be a game time decision on the Cavaliers. Meanwhile, as we talked about, you've got a couple of guys. You got a white side out. You got what's going on with uh, Chris Bosch out for the season. It's just a completely different Miami Heat team is now their sub 500, 29 and 36 here, sub 500 at home as well. Cavs coming in rolling. They continue to keep that streak going. Kyrie Irving 90 points in his last two games. He had 57 against the Spurs. We talked about that game on Friday. I could talk about it. We could do a whole nother show right now if you want to talk about that. And then he followed it up with 33. Not just 33, by the way. David Blatt made a hell of a point after that game. He didn't just follow up 57 with 33. He didn't 12 of 15 from the field. 33 points in 34 minutes. That's not just scoring, but that's incredibly economically scoring as well. LeBron had 21 and 13, as we know. Uh, Got that knee deal that we'll keep an eye on here. Uh, We'll see what happens with that, but should be a chance for the Cavaliers to get a good road one here and finish what what would be an unbelievable little road trip here for sure for the Cavaliers. Who would have thought that, I mean, in the nature of the beast, even with Orlando and Miami, who would have thought heading out on this thing? You got the two in Texas and the two in Florida. Assuming if the Cavaliers take care of business tonight, who saw them coming back four for four on that one? Who saw them coming back four for four? Even if you are are a believer, I believe this Cavs team can win the championship right now. But I didn't I didn't think they go who who goes who does that? You got Dallas, that's okay, they're struggling a little bit, but that's still a damn good team. You don't just beat them, you wreck shop in Dallas. You beat them worse than they've been beaten in quite some time. And uh you just beat them worse than, nobody does that to Dallas, man, in Dallas. And then San Antonio to that amazing instant classic that we watched and, and what Kyrie Irving did. Then you go dance all over the faces of Orlando and, and have Kevin Love sitting. You're so good. You're so hot at this point that Kevin Love's sitting out fourth quarters. He sits out whole games. It doesn't matter. I, my point is, is I'm having a little fun with it, but who saw that? Assuming you finish it tonight, and of course now I just set the stage for them to lose tonight to Miami because that's the way it goes, but if they did, man, nobody saw that coming. I sure didn't. I, I absolutely didn't, and and definitely not in the manner that this trip has gone as this team just continues to get itself get itself right at exactly the right time getting ready to head into the into the playoffs. Got to talk hoops real quick. Not just Cavs game tonight. Did you guys see what Anthony Davis did? I'll tell you, when people talk to me about best player in the NBA, that's a name that I throw out and he he's the one that I throw out that people kind of roll their eyes and give me that little that little smack of the lips and ah well uh, and I'm like, "What?" Listen, first off, he's a big man, and that is such a premium there is. But, man, that cat can ball in so many ways. Did you see what uh, what Anthony Davis did against the Nuggets? Unbelievable stat line. Uh, matter of fact, it's been at least – matter of fact, what did I see from the uh, from the Stats Bureau? 
uh, first player in over 30 years since they recorded block shots as a stat to have the stat line that Anthony Davis had. 36 points, 14 boards, 9 blocks, and 7 assists. He's only the second player in NBA history to have 30-plus, 10-plus boards, 8 or more block shots, and 7 assists. The only other person that did it, David Robinson, the Hall of Fame center from San Antonio who did it twice in the course of his career. Anthony Davis, just sick, man. And, I mean, uh, that's uh, just another performance there. And that team is still fighting to get in. They, they're, I think as it sits now, they're actually on the outside looking in. They're in that mixing with uh, Oklahoma City there, trying to get that last playoff spot there. But what a hell of a game. Uh, you've got to put him right there. with Whenever you want to talk about your top players in the game, your top couple, he is right up there, absolutely. Uh, Anthony Davis, just a pleasure to watch play basketball. But, damn, that stat line, that's that old Chamberlain-esque type stat line there, you know. And then you add the seven assists to it, too. But 36, 14, and nine blocks, uh, yeah, definitely not a not a bad night's work there for Anthony Davis and the Pelicans. The end of that Western, the bottom half of that Western Conference playoff run for the final two weeks of the season is going to be a lot of fun to watch uh, and see who ends up grabbing that eighth final spot there over in the West because it's going to be some good team that gets left out of the uh, of the Western Conference playoffs for sure. All right, guys, man, you know what? We're gonna get ready to we're gonna get ready to wrap this bad boy up. Yeah, no, you know what? I'm done. I'm never telling you guys how long the show is gonna be at the beginning of the night again. I'm positive that when we went on the air, I said 90 minute edition of the sports fix today. Here we sit, an extra an extra seven or an extra uh, 45 minutes after that, and we're still rolling. Guys, fantastic fun time today. I gotta go back to the beginning. Thank you all of you guys who came out over the weekend all the way up to Erie. Um, I'm gonna say it again. I didn't know I could still do that. I didn't know I could even still do that at that level. Uh, like I said, when, you're, when your eight-year-old son looks at you with a newfound look like, whoa, hey, I, I didn't know dad rolled like that, man. Then you know it's been a while since you put some work in like that, man. Thank you guys for coming out. And what a great night for you guys to come and, uh, come and check it out. But uh, anyways, good stuff, and, and I mean it. Forget about whether you like pro wrestling, don't like pro wrestling, whatever. Point is, is in 12 months, I shaved off nearly 100 pounds. I got myself back in not only game shape, but better shape than when I was in game shape. And now I'm getting back out there and doing it. Don't let anybody out there. The people that tell you you can't do it are the people that decided they can't do it. They won't do it. Somebody else broke their spirit and they gave up. So they got to make you give up. The people that tell you that you're wasting your life, that you're chasing dreams, that you're doing this and doing that. Tell them to kiss your ass. And I don't mean that in any bad way. You put the work in, and there ain't nothing you can't do, and there's nobody that can stop you. And that's as legit as legit can be, man. And that's why, look, we can have fun and goof and joke and make fun of the Browns all they want. That's why I love this city, because at the end of the day, even with a crappy football team or a stupid owner or when our baseball team sucks or when our basketball team's a joke of the, of the world, it doesn't matter. The people in Cleveland, man, this is this is one tough city. And you guys, you don't quit. You don't give up. You fight. That's what we do. We fight. We fight, baby. And we don't give up, man. And I just mean it. Look, don't. You may get a second chance, but there's not a whole lot of third chances because time runs out. If there's something that you need to be doing, do it. If there's something that you want to do, do it. If you're waiting, stop waiting. Because tomorrow ain't promised to nobody. And what is promised to us, well, not really. Hopefully we'll be back here tomorrow at noon uh, if somebody wants to give us that. You get my point, though, guys. Get out there and make it happen. Hell, nothing nothing else to do but do it, man. Get out there and get to live in your life, guys. We're going to get back here tomorrow living our life with Jeff Gorman from Indians101.com in the house talking some tribe, all the latest from spring training. Not just that, Dr. Football Bill Check is tentatively scheduled to return back in the house. Looking forward to talking to him. Been a few weeks since we've had Bill in the house. We'll talk some football. We'll hit all the latest Cavaliers in the heat tonight. We'll talk about that tomorrow and so much more. There's some play-in games starting on the tournament. And, hmm, man, this week is just getting rolling. Guys, enjoy your night. Don't forget Tournament Challenge ESPN. Go find 
the Sports Fix Group and enter your bracket today, win that Cleveland Sports Prize Pack. We'll be back here tomorrow, same bat time, same bat channel, live at noon across the Sports Fix Radio Network. We love you, Cleveland and beyond. Have a great time. Watch the Tribe this afternoon, the Cavs this evening, and come on back here tomorrow. We'll see you right here on the Sports Fix. Put your hands up in the air, everybody say yeah, yeah, yeah.